Oh, baby. <laughs> Give me that ooh box. Oh, yeah. something tonight <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are we doing I, you just showed me you just told me to show up so i showed up i hate to tell you big but um we need to have a discussion um it's about your timeline addiction um it's time we sat down and spoke about this you're not doing enough let he who is without dilithium <laughs> cast the first stone i think we all need interventions for each other oh, at this yeah. point <laughs> yeah Speaking of how my shuttles come back in, uh, we thought we'd just do a chilled out stream talking about nothing or everything about Star Trek, about ourselves, anything in chat or whatever. So Star should hopefully be along here to join us at some point. And uh, I think this is your idea, Otto. What, what brought this on? What, what thought, you know, we just catch up. And Germany is now 2G plus. So to go anywhere or do anything, you need uh, to be vaccinated. You need to have a same day test. So I have no social... Well... I do have, I'm going out to the pub on Thursday with my buddy, and that's going to be our only shot to get together before the holidays. But other than that, I I can't do anything, so it's like, all right, so boys, you want to get and together like a, and talk nonsense? Yeah. Do you have to go out in like a full hazmat suit or something? <laughs> is, that, is that where they, we're at? They miss you with this like antibacterial spray when you walk through the door. It gets in your eyes, it stings. <laughs> Wasn't there a TNG episode about that, about the unclean or something like that? You know, certain people that didn't have the right vaccinations were cast into the underworld and Picard had to come along and sort of reunite the two <laughs> factions. That sounds like a TNG episode, definitely. Uh, there's a Voyager episode with oh, uh, yeah. Dej Dejarin, the the homicidal oh, yeah. hologram. Is that how you're feeling? Who... <laughs> that old chestnut. <laughs> she He goes crazy on Bellana for being filthy, unclean, pagan, yeah, yeah. humanoid. <laughs> He's a two hundred percent boom, isn't he? <laughs> this is how I. This is this yes. is the state this game has done to me now. I look at, I watch episodes and I go, oh yeah, he's a dipsec or you know, he's a good void or he's terrible. You don't want to take him. Let's skip this episode. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you see this? You see this, this episode's frame. just full of skillets. <laughs> you see the one scene, well, the one scene where they had that one frame where they they're doing the timelines pose and you're like, ah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. ruined me now. It's ruined me. Uh, oh, hey, stars in the chat. <laughs> Get in here. <laughs> we couldn't Save meet us. his appearance fee, so he's like, fuck you guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, we have to pay royalties to the uh, And Garters uh, Society. <laughs> Speaking of this show, I was listening to an old episode today, Don't Judge Me, and I realized that I said I had the dude Funko, but he never made it onto oh, the show. Awesome. So, <laughs> Have you got so a white Russian with you as well? No. <laughs> I've got the dude and I've got Picard, and that's all I have. I'm not a big Funko guy, I but... I don't like them, really. I'm not a fan. I, I don't mind displaying them. I know uh, yeah, Low Cost I've... Monkey had, like, a big sort of stack of them, didn't he, in the background when he when he was on the other week. I have an Alex Trebek Funko Pop and <laughs> a... Uh, big Jeopardy fan. Yeah. And a uh, Mandalorian bobblehead. No, nice. Uh, with its him and, and Grogu. As a, uh, those were both Christmas presents, and they're at my desk at work. Big that's Jeopardy the extent fan. of my collection. Mm -hmm. What about a regular DeLorean from like Back to the Future? <laughs> Instead of a Mandalorian? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> okay. Killing the show early, I see. <laughs> it's 9.34. Yeah. I've been asleep for the last five hours. It's a Sunday. I don't have to make sense. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't today. We've got no no, no schedule. Um, I'm slightly worried about yeah. myself today, though, because I was saying this to be before the show while you're out, Auto. Um, so I picked up my beer from from my shelf, and I was like, I, I'm going to get this one I drink. I'll start a stout tonight. And this is a, it's called Roaster Coaster, and it is a, a, a Nitro Imperial Vietnamese coffee stout. I didn't realize. Well, let's see it. it it's 9%. Yeah. And I was like, okay, maybe this is the only one I have of these tonight. <laughs> Cause the the elephant beer. Drinking like a fortified mm. wine. I have to maybe take this one slowly. Uh, uh, Walt says uh, his brother's selling some on eBay. DMing him for details. There we go. There's the hustle. Get on that Funko Pop <laughs> MLM stream. Uh, L -L -M -L -M. <laughs> so we need to have the Funko Pop NFTs and then we'll just have the whole. Don't. I the reckon there thing. is someone that is doing that. There's got to be a Funko yeah. Pop. I 
fucking hate NFTs. Who decided that I was going to be a thing? I have no idea what NFTs are, and at this point, I'm too afraid to ask. So. <laughs> no, you're better for it. Just, yeah. just don't. You're happy or not? Don't even look into it. So, meanwhile, I I decided to go in a um, an iodine and band aids direction, and <laughs> have maybe the most notorious uh, eyeless the scotch iodine. available, the Lafroig, mm. which is what you call forty eight percent idol. Yeah, so, okay, uh, but you're not drinking a pint of it. Come on. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> Have you seen some of these shows before? Well, okay. <laughs> don't, don't write me off just yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have, and this one's coming up next. The Crafty Brewing Company, and there's a little mustache on there. Nice. It's an IPA that is fruity and hoppy. Okay, oh. answer, answer me this, guys. When, like, I assume you guys drink wine. Do you drink wine? When, when the case. Yeah, I prefer wine. dry yeah. red. Yeah, generally. No, fair enough. When you go to the shop, what is your barrier for entry for buying the wine? Do you look at the back and go, "Oh, yeah, these grapes at this time of season," or are you like me and you go? Oh, there's an animal on the cover. I'm going to buy that one. There's a giraffe on this one. This must be good. No, see, the bottle doesn't even enter into it. I just look down below it at the price tag, <laughs> and it's like, oh, that's under fifteen dollars. Sold fifty so, fucking Daddy Warbucks. They have to pay me to take it off the premises. <laughs> like if it broke and some of the wine spilled out, I'm like, it's still good. It's still good. And I'm <laughs> sweeping it up. I'm no. Well, yeah, it's like, and if it if it has a handle on the side of the bottle, then yeah. you know that's that's when we're getting. If it into comes it. in a plastic jug with a. <laughs> handle yeah. on the side or a this box will get me right <laughs> fucked up <laughs> so there's a there's a wine they sell here which is technically not wine but it's, it's it's on the bottom shelf and it looks like a nice wine bottle and it's called shy pig and it's 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 the one of the cheapest ones you can buy it's not like like the sort of brain rot stuff it is still sort of like a, a general social wine but it does say on the back it's not grapes from a certain region it is a wine based product so it's not actually wine it's just it's, so it's the Kraft American cheese of yeah, wine. Yes, that was the, the, yeah, the Briar's ice cream of <laughs> wines. Plastic bottles of Crete and wine in Greece. They have so much. Just put it in water. Yeah. Stars getting here. Come on. Charge your headphones. Yeah, Stars. T- tell us about your massive um, Seder cock bottle that you bought for your boyfriend while you were in Crete. I want to hear that story again. <laughs> I've not heard that one. I've not heard that one. You were there for that one. Was I? Oh, yeah, it was on the stream. Memory like a sieve. How many years ago was this? <laughs> Don't I might have even week. been there for that one. Yeah, I think you were. Yeah. And then I talked about the big book of butts. So. <laughs> Does it lie? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm in a TNG episode where no one has any recollection and I'm the only one that remembers the sequence of It'll events. It'll start disappearing and you'll be trapped in your own warp bubble. <laughs> There's That's nothing the wrong with they me. They left the clues. There must be something wrong with timeline stalks. Uh, Humans can't <laughs> resist a mystery. <laughs> is that is Let's that your card? No, I don't, well, I mean, it was a a, a very half-assed attempt at it, and then it I was I just to another failed it. By the way, the folks, don't forget your faction event shuttles if you're oh, watching along. I've got ten percent oh. battery and forty minutes. I know our easy time. bands can just suck you in, lull you in, but. Because this is the problem, I've been playing a game called Satisfactory at the moment. It's one of those games you can kind of get lost in, and I've been making the mistake of playing that at the same time I've been running these shuttles, so I'll be playing for a minute, and I'll go, oh shit! <laughs> Look at the clock and go, oh Christ, these are like 20 minutes overdue. Okay. Yeah. yeah and Namor and I were saying, because we were working on the big book, he's coding, I'm authoring, and I'll notice like an hour and a half later that I haven't looked up yet, and I'm like, oh shit, my shuttles came back an hour ago, so... It happens all the time. And you're what, rank 12 at the moment? 13? Something like that? Something like that. High up. I don't think I've been this high on the scoreboard for any, anything. I wasn't even I like factions for, it. for pushing. It's the most like, physically comfortable without destroying your brain. It's such an easy event. <laughs> it's, yeah. It, it's weird. Like, yeah, that's I, good. I was going for top 100. I thought, yeah, I'll do that. Get my three humanoid figures. And then just sort of pushing shots. I pushed 24 last night because I've got a shitload of tokens, a shitload of boosts. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, hang on, I'm in like 32. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Apparently I am. That's what's happening. No, both times that I, I made really big runs in fashion events, it kind of worked out that way. I, I wasn't, like I was shooting for maybe top 100. Hmm. And then, you know, maybe one or two runs in and... It, the rank would just jump way up and it's like yeah. okay well i guess i'm here now 
I think if you're putting everything well. into it to sort of because you you don't want to say I'm shooting for a hundred, you want to shoot for like fifty, don't you? Just to give yourself a bit of breathing room. And if you do that, you sort of send so many shuttles. Like, yeah, it depends oh, on the competition. And, and to as get well. that, get the the coveted timelines talks shout out, right? <laughs> oh, of course. Not that we have a timelines talks this week that I can shout myself out on. Damn it. <laughs> Yes, we do. Why do you keep saying that? Well, we do. We have do- we have the doc episode, but we're, do- we're doing that as more a... Uh, doc Sember. I'm showing you a yeah, shout. Okay. We'll do a shout out too. Um, because we have to, because we're on it. <laughs> we wouldn't otherwise. <laughs> I'm an altruistic now, guy. I want to make sure that everyone the whole thing. feels welcome. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't toot your own horn, when can you? <sighs> My uh, wife has been baking an incredible amount of cookies. Yesterday was double chocolate with caramel chunks and chocolate chip cookies, and today was cranberry macadamia cookies. Mm-hmm. And there's a Is... big cardboard box over there with individually wrapped bags of cookies, and she mails them because she, she plays World of Warcraft. So she mails stuff regularly out to all of her guildies, like 15, 20 guildies. She sends cookies and sweets and... If it's you guys play World of Warcraft, War, War like, yeah, that's about we're, right. We're in the, we're in the should... same fleet as Auto, aren't we? Where's, where's our? We're, yeah, not, we're yeah. in the same squadron as okay. Auto. I mean, yeah, let's but you not... don't play World of Warcraft, so. I well, I mean, right you. now, I was just I was doing the mental math right now on whether a, you know, four figure, cost of a plane ticket is going to be worth it to get out there and get some of those cookies, and I think it might be. I I've told my buddies before if they pay because the shipping can be kind of outrageous mm. from here to the state if they paid the shipping i am happy to fill a box with whatever sweets i can find here homemade or otherwise so but no no one's taking me up on that yet since, since we're on food come on what, what was dinner oh, i suppose big you're not you're you've just had lunch haven't you this is yeah time zone thing what, what, what was what was your recent food go what, what was what was dinner lunch tonight uh t- dinner tonight is going to be nachos uh, homemade nachos that i Are just you serving them in the purchased. hat or is it on the table <laughs> uh well you know that's that's up to my wife i haven't i, I don't want to speak for her uh but i did just have to buy the the chips for it because we um use a uh, grocery pickup for uh our, our grocery store and she put in the order for the chips that she was going to need for uh, for the nachos, and you know you, your standard big triangular mm. tortilla chips. And they uh, substituted in those tiny little round bastards <laughs> that the ones that uh, never hold the weight and they break in half every time. Yeah, and it's a, you cannot make sufficient nachos with that. That's not no. it's just not going to work. So I I had to go out and rectify that this afternoon there's, there's some comedian i forget which one but he does a whole bit about nachos and the the cheese nucleus and if you pull and it pulls out the whole nucleus with it you can't you can't take that that's like stealing the whole <laughs> you have to be equitable and fair to yeah, people it's, it's like taking the the slice of pizza and then it pulls the cheese off the slice mm-hmm. next to it yeah, yeah. A bit like we no, don't you do... don't that's yeah. not free cheese. You, you don't put do it back. nachos like yeah. as a dinner here. In the, well, I, at least I don't in, in the dinner. Like, do you, do you just have like the big sharing platter in front of you? Because I've had them at pubs, just like sharing with the mate. But do you like as a main dinner? Do you just have a lot of it, or? Uh, I, we've... <laughs> He's American. He's from Texas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So sorry, silly question. Back up the track boys, back it up. It's just one large tortilla. Yeah, so they'll bring on it. They'll they'll <laughs> they'll bring out the the sharing plate of nachos and they'll set it in front of me and then everybody can wait for their plates too. <laughs> He's, see, big as the alpha lion, so all the all the huntresses <laughs> wait their turn behind him, and when he's had enough from his plate, he moves on, and then all the kids and and the women flood the plate. Fantastic. No, actually, it's funny. Uh, my my daughter, the our baby daughter, who's two. Uh, anytime anybody has food, she will get up uh, with me. She will get up on the table and sit on the other side of my plate and just like bite <laughs> bite <laughs> and she's not gonna leave until she has had sufficient samples of of your food and yeah. it it goes for goes for everybody so it's basically me with my cats yeah i hate 
I, I'm kind of the Joey in this situation. I hate sharing my food. So whenever we go out for a meal with Louis, with, with my wife, and uh, we sit and we get a dessert, especially desserts. I don't mind about my mains too much because you get a lot of that. But desserts, you kind of get smaller portions. So I have to order what she's having because I know the first thing she says is like, "Can I try a bit of that?" I'm like, "No, you should have ordered it." <laughs> <laughs> every time <laughs> I, I was like that but she broke me early on in the marriage so i'm like all right i'll let i'll share with you but you're the only one i'll share with so oh, you softy yeah but then <laughs> we had now we have three cats and so i share with four women in the house <laughs> so yeah, don't 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 uh take my my storytelling to mean that i enjoy sharing food in any way <laughs> at all and my <laughs> wife knows it but she lets it happen anyway anyway it's funny how By the way, Big, if, get. if you're going to share any t- any streams, any timeline talks with your family, this would probably be the one because yeah. they'll probably learn a thing or two about <laughs> you along the way. She's like, what, what the fuck are shuttles? Go back to the nacho talk, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a big, big, do you do the thing? Do you do the thing when you're eating something and the kids come and go, oh, what you got? Can I try something? You go, it's spicy. Don't have it. <laughs> oh, that's a cheat code. You can't yeah. go to the well too often. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, they figure it out. Mm. Well, and or see the flip side of that is it actually is spicy, and then you let them try it, and then you <laughs> yes. know it's a sneak attack. Yeah, it's like it's spicy, but do you want to try it? Because my my son, my elder son, is a bit of a pig. He will he, he, he just self describes himself as an eating machine. He will like he will just clear plates, and the other one doesn't want to bother. But he will like finish his dinner, and I'll sort of half finish mine. He look at mine going. You, you, you're gonna, and you can tell him he wants to say it, and I'm just like, I'm looking at him going, go on, just ask. <laughs> Here you go. But see, the thing is, it's in the, uh, at least for now, I, I come out better in these deals anyway, because what happens is, you know, everybody has their food, and then they're, you know, they'll eat half of it, and then mm. it's like, oh, are we ready to clear the plates? And it's like, yeah, I'll clear the plate. Ow, mm, yeah. Ow, yeah. Ow, ow. My youngest one. Especially if it's dad. like a, if it's like a taco night or something like that, it's just like I make out like gangbusters. It's like I get my two, three tacos or whatever, and then I eat like the equivalent of like another three just from the leftovers of everybody else. So since, since my youngest you can't, starts, you, yeah. You can't throw away tacos. I'm no. sorry. You just, it's no, it's not, it's not done. You can't waste food. Yeah. We, yeah. we, we sit at the dinner table and like, I realized like since my youngest has been sitting up and having like full meals with us, I realized like, oh yeah, this is why I haven't been having breakfast so often is because I've just been finishing his dinners and just overstuffing myself. It's ridiculous. Chat, what are you guys up to tonight? Mm. You guys are kind of quiet. You're watching us. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously yeah. not a lot. <laughs> Watch, watching us and just yeah. wondering, it's like, well, when is the show actually going to start? Is, is this the show? This is the show. <laughs> it's the this... pre-roll. Yeah, we were, we were talking. We might play what the dub later if it gets real slow, but we'll see. But also, what, what was your what was your dinner tonight? Apparently, we can do like four hours on food. So. Oh yeah, too, right. I, I, <laughs> I don't think I'll, we need to worry about we'll that. Get, I'll, I will take my computer up into the kitchen. We will do some live stream <laughs> cooking. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, tonight was creamy chicken tuckitos. Ooh, mm. Mm, both going the Mexican. So I had a lot. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I did. Uh, I stopped at the uh, the Mexican market on the way home. Before getting the the chips, because my wife is a sucker for uh, pan dulce, you know, What's like that? the uh, the Mexican style. It's like well, it, there's different kinds of them, but the ones she really likes are the conchas. They kind of look like big pastry, uh, like conch shells or something. All right. hey. But yeah, they're just they're just big Ooh. sweet breads. They're, they're, oh, but they're not. They're kind of mildly sweet, so it's it's. They're actually really nice. And almost she's a, she's a for pretzelish so. kind of. Um, I mean, a little sweeter than that. Uh, I mean, it, it's hard to describe if you don't know what it is. But uh, yeah, they're really good. My wife loves them, so I just whenever I can kind of sense that it's time for like a little treat of some kind you know maybe you know once a month something like that i'll just go out there unprompted and just buy a couple of bags full and just bring them home and then everybody's happy and no so mr ogarters welcome to oh, the yeah. round table is it round as four of us that's a square table <clears throat> yes but it. we're talking food so we're pretty round at the moon uh, I mean, it looks like uh looks like rectangular on my screen but you know <laughs> who am i to judge yeah, man, this should to be square. It's fine. No, no, hang on. This is the four pillars of timelines talks. This is what keeps it keeps it up and running. <laughs> Hustle, flow, dilithium, requisition tokens. <laughs> oh, speaking of, 
28 minutes. We're fine. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You're fine. Oh, I still got two hours, man. You, you're... I'm running. I'm I running. Okay. I'm running. Four. I accidentally sent out nine hour shuttles. We have another eight thirty to do on this stream before I can. <laughs> so I'm running four. My core four are on the three star timer. So they're running at one one an hour and a half, and I'm running ten on the two X's. So. So you just gave away your strategy. Now they're going to pass you. They can have it. It's too late now. If you're sitting there at three three thousand and you're hoping to get up here at thirteen, come on then. Just All right, try. how many of you guys? Don't <laughs> shy up on like that. <laughs> how, how many of you guys know the the segment? You guys in chat know the segment from Conan and Brian where they do in the year oh, three thousand or two thousand. Yeah, yeah, and they do like in the future. This will. Be, they do whatever topical stuff. We keep talking about doing that segment on the show, but I'm not sure we're well enough equipped at improv humor to pull that off we might have no, to script have to some script of those it, yeah <laughs> we did talk about that a couple of months ago it's still in our show notes i think right at the bottom so we've got a little section that says future stuff and it just has that in it i think <laughs> yeah we do it's future stuff and it doesn't even have an underline that's how seriously we take that section yeah. of the uh, show notes i know because we've already gone through the rest of our future stuff it's completely bereft of ideas yeah, we have no other future no, it's all it. just done. We're just panicking. We, we live week, week to week. Week to yeah. week is another command of sec voyager we have to moan about. There's even a little mustachio on, on the cab oh, for nice. it, too. That's cool. <laughs> Stars, how are you? Um, I'm ill. Oh, have been no. for the last week. Yeah. Um, my left ear refuses to pop, so the pressure is unbalanced in here, so if I'm a little bit loopy, that's why. Um, Dude, I just got trying to from... eat, please. Come on. I mean, it's not gonna like suddenly pop and like stuff is gonna come out. It's just a case of like it literally just. Be cool. Do you know that? Are you sure? To be fair, if it's gonna pop anything and spurt anything, it'll be blood. So like you know, that's a different. That's a that's a centerpiece of the show right there. Well, that's something that all can go to on the timestamp and be like go to here. Oh, yeah. I've appeared shirtless before, so I probably shouldn't be heckling someone else about not being keeping their food down. You know, we've seen everything. <laughs> I've seen, I've, seen yeah. <laughs> I've seen it all. It's too late. I've seen everything. <laughs> oh. I agree so hard. To, if anyone has seen that, that's the. Uh, um, was this TV show called Extras with. Um, what's his name? Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's sort of like. And it's him. He's like a failed. Or sort of like a ba background actor, isn't he? And he ends up interviewing Patrick Stewart in his trailer, and it's it's fantastic. <laughs> Single best thing he's ever Well, there's also one with um, David Bowie, who I think is just yeah. as funny. Oh, I don't know if I've seen that one. Yeah. It's Oh, it's no, I don't think it's oh. Because well. he, he has a conversation with him, and then David Bowie go walks up to the no. piano, and he just starts singing about like, "Poor little sad bastard." Oh, no, we have seen that. No, we yeah. have seen that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean the the four the, the, the four things you have to see on extras is the Patrick Stewart thing, the David Bowie thing, the Kate Winslet thing, I and seen that one. then yeah, and then the uh, the Ian McKellen bit on uh, on acting. Oh, like Oh yeah, yeah. So this yeah, another, it's like yeah. You know, there's another. You see, I'm, with, I'm not. I'm. So, yeah, there's another show with Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant. I can't remember the name of it. And it's also got Warwick Davis. Abroad? Sorry, no, not that one. Uh, it's got Warwick, Warwick Davis Jr. Uh, Jr. Is involved in it as well. I've only seen that clip oh, with Liam Neeson that's on the one there. I was going to talk about Liam Neeson when he's like, I could do yeah. comic acting. I I have gone around. <laughs> yeah. I'm completely riddled with chlamydia. <laughs> I have full blown AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. Uh, I take it back, Big. This is not the episode to show to your family. <laughs> we've, oh, yeah. we've sort of taken a turn at this point. <laughs> Start turning up. It went blue. <laughs> and I was even the one to initiate, oddly enough. Um, yeah. <coughs> incidentally, Walt, I am sitting at around about what rank 300? I think I'm 300. Nice. It's. it's... 757 is good. Mm. Yeah, you're, well, you're yeah, still it's... within striking distance. That's fine. Oh, yeah. Push a few yeah as long as you've got a few timers and a few requisition tokens, you'll be fine. Push push a bit more. Right? You'll be you'll be there. You'll be there. Faction talks, 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 talks. <laughs> I have advice. God, can we please not? I will never forget Auto. I think it was Marto was going for his number three, and I think you and him were on voice chat at one point going through those final moments. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I was reading. I was like a stock ticker reading off the scores of the people ahead of him. And I'm like, and spend dill now and dill now. <laughs> <laughs> and, <he's, laughs> and he just barely made it up there. So. Actually, we can talk about it. With him oh, next oh Jesus, I'm Indica. Oh, nice. Yeah, I've, I've literally just got over a cold as well. I think I had about three days like lying in bed. I mean, you probably heard me last night coughing my guts up as well. I think I've just about got over that. Yeah. With the anti ASMR stream. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no help for the 35 to 50 age group today. No, you're not going to sleep. <laughs> oh, we, we already had one. Who was it in chat? Oh, it was Nobleman, wasn't it? Nobleman say he just he listens to us so he can get a good night's sleep. Ah, uh, yeah. Hey, we'll come on. We'll, we'll, hey, that's a paid service. You want us to come on and talk every night? Definitely. I'll uh, subscribe a bonus. We will, we will chat. I mean, he can sleep. afford it. <laughs> he just has to trade me some of his crew so I can get 12 hour voyage that's vacation, true. and I'll happily do it. No one was posting on yeah. uh, our, our Discord. Join the Discord. Um, I think it's like these are the only crew I have left to retrieve, and it's not a long list. <laughs> no. Yeah, I saw so, someone posted now. on the forums a couple months ago, and they were angry about something. But then they posted no. the roster, and they had literally every crew immortalized. Yeah, and I'm, and it was something I don't know. They were bored or something. I'm like, well, <laughs> dude, <laughs> and you have literally every crew in the game. There's like not a ton left to do at that point. So yeah, it's, a, it's weird when you do literally everything there is to do in a game. It becomes less interesting. I hope, Nolman, that, that you don't run out of things to do, because... I don't know, maybe I beat Chase the snake the in Snake. Now what do I do? I'm bored. <laughs> it's the dog that caught his tail. It's Go for the 14-hour voyages. Yeah, when, when you're really bored, it's now time to start a nightmare ult. That's what I say. <laughs> Dude, alts... Alts, I mean, mm. I'm an altaholic, but they have helped a lot. If I start to feel like I'm bored or a crew aren't making a difference or whatever, start an alt and everything's fresh and it's like fun and there's no obligation to keep up with all the new mm. stuff. So I like it. You can look at your dailies and kind of go, no, I'm not going to do it today. I don't have to. It's nice. <laughs> Just chilled out. I'm not going to live in this crew. Don't have to. Nah. I'll air lock them. Fuck it. Nah. Nah. Braxton, who needs it? That's your main. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, a lot of games I played growing up, Diablo, mm. World of Warcraft, Arena, Path of Exile, which is still going, they're kind of like based on seasons. So, they'll like start a new ladder and people race to level up their character. And then interest sort of falls off after a few weeks or a month. And then you come back a few months later and start a new ladder. And I feel like that cycle really helps you... Mm helps stave off the burnout and you can play those yeah. games for years and years and years so it's tough with a get with a game like timelines when it's something new every every week and you feel like if you miss it you gotta wait Content months. train kites on yeah. chugging <laughs> and it's like i almost feel like with timelines it's a case of if you are going to stop you have to stop basically until the next portal update otherwise there's going to be so many crew missing from your thing you're like oh i missed the all these crew it's like you might as well just wait until the next portal update, yeah. and then you can actually start pu pulling new crew that you missed. Unless all frozen beholds, which, you know, that's always for us. It happens. Yeah. You wouldn't know anything about all frozen beholds, would you, Idol? Nah, not had <laughs> too many of them. Now, they are starting to pop up a little more frequently for me now. I, I don't, it's don't the, appreciate it. It's but... the all... Uh, it's not. It's not just the all immortalized. Yeah, it's the all frozen one that really. It's like, oh, these three trash crew that I froze ages ago are now appearing in this. Yeah, it's 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 not a nice feeling. They just need to put a refresh button there. Just just put it. I'll pay ten dilithium to refresh it. I would. Yeah. You wish they would still leave that level. Mm. Yeah. I would pay a hundred thousand ISM for that. <laughs> it's about the market <laughs> cap, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, I'm talking to plain simple Garrick. I think he might pop in awesome. as well. All right, what he had for dinner. The the that he is elusive. The power of dads combined. We'll have an old dead stream. Mira Saru uh, is a dupe in the update. Couldn't remember him being in the last update. Yeah, he was. I think. Yeah, the Mira Saru is now. Yeah, I think I've seen him in a world. Yeah. Just, yeah. just about. Yeah. yeah. I actually he, got a star on him. In the last Galaxy he, event, I thought from he's the not as good portal. as I thought he was going to be. I've not used him that much. The, the anti-meta chance is what kills most of his yeah. chance to really be relevant on your roster. It's like 
if you if you want him, but better, you kind of just want to get someone like Soji Asha, really. But I like him. Still, nice art. Like Mirror, guess what? How many more better Mirror cards are there? There are more. Uh, he's pretty much the best. Aha. Uh-huh. Oh, ho. Ah, it's a goose wielding a batleth. <laughs> I've just realized that's your avatar. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Let me see if I can uh, make this window a little bit more compatible. Aha. Uh-huh. How's it going, guys? What's hey, up, you. What up? Good to see you. How's he it going? just beamed in. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I did get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say fuck you guys and storm off, but I'm actually kind of enjoying being here, so I'm just going to yeah, grouse. This, 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 this whole thing was your idea. <laughs> yeah. You've already talked about how this is your substitute for socializing. So That's uh, true. So here you go. Yeah. Uh, so, Garrick, what did you have for dinner tonight? <laughs> uh, not yet. It's still it's like only tacos. four Eastern. Of course, here. it is. Yeah, oh. Oh. tacos. What is what yeah. is the dinner plan then? Uh, salad of some kind. Okay. Oh my God! What are you doing <laughs> yeah. on this street? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we've had a really bad post Thanksgiving, one right after the other, meal after meal after heavy oh, meal. Okay. So we're like, all right. Is this, cool gonna be, is this going to be like the salad and then like dressing? There it is. <laughs> uh, this is your come to um, Jesus meal, for, basically. For me. For me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Dude, our, our friends brought salad for Thanksgiving. Well, what was it? Last week or the week before? And it was like, it was, there was technically leafy greens there, but there were like big strips of um, like the salty ham and delicious croutons. And the dressing was the best. It was like this creamy balsamic. Oh, it was so good. It was like better than the freaking potatoes and gravy. It was so good. Well, that's uh, it's it's good that you didn't turn them away at the door like I would have. <laughs> like you brought a salad to Thanksgiving. No, I mean they're Germans. Such you know? disrespect. You have to you have to make allowances for the non. You the also foreigners. wasn't mentioning the fact that they brought an entire keg of beer with them. It's like you, know, you <laughs> oh. kind of got to take a breath for the smooth here. Yeah. No, he's my drinking buddy, so I he's he gets see, it. Yeah. See? It always makes me laugh when you go to McDonald's and like when they first start saying, We're doing salads and then you look at the calorie count for like the dressing and everything <laughs> like, like it's actually bigger than a big Mac. It's like mm, it's not quite yeah. Good, yeah. I always try to measure things against you know, if you get like a can of soda that has like forty grams of sugar or whatever. If I look at like a delicious food that I know is bad for me, I'm like, well, at least it's better than a can of Coke, and then I just eat it anyways. <laughs> or my 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 go to is how many bowls of pasta is that? <laughs> goes in there. Depends on the size of the bowl. Yeah. I don't know if you ever um, I don't know who knows about Dunkin' Donuts. It's like a big mm. coffee and donut chain. Yeah. They have those uh, sugary sort of coffee drinks. One of them, like, that's three bowls of pasta. <laughs> how, can you ju- how can you justify that for a liquid? I don't get it. And here's, here's Big having, like, an entire yeah. bottle of whiskey, and he's, he's like, yeah. no. Deco. It's slimming. <laughs> so they're actually bringing, uh, I think, I don't know whether this is a, a, a thing about Brexit and now that all our laws are just lax, but I was, so I, I pass about three McDonald's on my way to work, so it's already hard work enough for me not to pull in and, like, just order breakfast every day I drive to work, but now, <laughs> now, they're actually, there's a, they're, they're, they're developing this whole sort of industrial area on my way to work, and they're bringing a Wendy's, which I thought didn't exist outside the US. So I'm kind of half cool. like, oh god, what are they doing, and also half, is Wendy's good? Is, is what's I, a Wendy's? I've heard of Wendy's is okay. I I would put Wendy's above your McDonald's and yeah. If, if McDonald's Burger is King. a tier ten quality, then Wendy's is like a tier nine. Let's basically. tier the fast food. Let's do it. All right, let's tier it. Let's yeah. tier all foods. I, man, you know I'm I'm trying to think of it now. Uh, would Outback I put... Steakhouse is like tier four, right? I, yeah, that seems fair. Like it, it's uh, not it's, it's not high end, but you can eat. It's not as good as you would think it would be. Um, Stars, when you've uh, had it the first time. Go on, yeah. what tears and Nando's? <laughs> oh, oh tier God. Seven. Um, that's being generous. Um, <laughs> no bad. voyage, no base, no collections. It's like a voyage. <laughs> it's like a tier eight. <laughs> it's, it is daily use, though, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's uh, no. 
It, the, Nando's is the yeah. reason one of my friends went vegetarian. You're lucky. It, it, it's one of the reasons one of my friends went vegetarian because he was sort of like, you know, he went, went oh, I'm going to have a cheeky Nando's and all this. And he, uh, when he went past the kitchen. As he walked past the kitchen, he watched them like steaming chicken, pulling them out of like like this tray of just flesh out of like a steam bag. And he just went, I don't want this anymore. <laughs> Oh, it, it actually reminds me of a joke. I, I I don't think this was the context, but it works anyway. It's uh, just a uh, Eng- English chicken seasonings, and it's uh, different bottles of water. <laughs> <laughs> I think Not I- wrong. <laughs> Let me know what that's about right. I I know. I, I hate. I kind of hate those. Like, well, it's better than English food. You just drink. You know, the reason you don't go abroad is because you bring it all home. And it's like, well, we eat good food. We do. All right. So <laughs> when I visited England, we basically went from from. Um, uh, in to in or pub to pub, and mm. that's why I'm like I'm a I'm a big pub crawler. So the food isn't right. It's not super seasoned, but it's fine. It's it is what it is. But the one thing, sticky toffee pudding. Oh. Man, you guys should export the shit out of that because mm. that's the best. That's maybe the best dessert I've ever had. And once we discovered it, we ordered it for every <laughs> every meal <laughs> after that because we're like we have a limited number of. Do you guys ever count the number of meals you have left when you're leaving? A place like for yeah. vacation or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, every time I go to Crete, there's this really nice like um, pizza place that does like gyros and pizza, and they do some of the nicest pizza I've ever had. That's you know not Italian. Um, and every time we go there, it's like okay, we have two weeks. How many times can I justify going there? And I, <laughs> I always make manage to squeeze in one more than I think I can because I'm just that stoned. <laughs> So Every on. time I go to Crete, look at this jet setter. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Geez. Slackened off the last two years. I can't yeah, fathom why. We, so um... it's like my third trip to Ibiza this year. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... I would never. <laughs> yeah. No, uh... coming, mate. Yeah. You're not out there, are you? No, yeah, minutes. that's me. Yeah. Me with the, the glow rods and the. I don't even fucking Oh, that's know. what you call it, huh? Oh, mate, I met this bird out there. Well, pucker. Um. I went to my dude. Wife's... I love you guys, but I would never be seen in public with the five of us. <laughs> <laughs> like that would be it would be a neon sign right yes. there. I went to Mallorca with my wife. Uh, on, it was like our second holiday we ever had together, and we didn't research it that well, and we didn't have a lot of money, and we kind of like went out there, and went, oh shit, we've only got a hundred euros to last us two weeks. So we were finding Ooh. every one of the cheapest hey, that's places. What's stupid. Yeah, we, we ended up sort of t- going in the draft, <laughs> but like we we went we went out to like these really cheap places, and we found found this one place like that. Ah, this is a really cheap menu. Let's go here, and this will just do us this fuel. And I ordered a lasagna. Uh, which should be, you know, everyone knows, should be like nice layers of plaster and mints and like, like nice, like, sort of ruby plaster. Sauce. Wait, wait, uh, sorry, yeah, plaster. Pasta. 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 You said, you said you plaster. Said plaster. <laughs> you 100% said plaster. British <laughs> cooking <laughs> streets <laughs> again. <laughs> Interior plaster. Just pave it on, yeah. <laughs> but, um. It's alright, it's just a bit of wall plug, it's fine. Mm. <laughs> plaster <laughs> spackle. Someone yeah. comes over with a stud detector. Goes, the grout is really great this time of the year, so you know. <laughs> All right, let the man finish his story now. Yeah. If you if you ask the rater over, he'll get uh, he'll like you top you off with a corking gun. It's fine. Oh, do you know what? I, I would take sauce and a corking gun. That would be amazing. They came over with ketchup <laughs> and a massive cork gun. Just, yeah, I'm like, brilliant. Hyper. No, this, I, this is well, fine I mean, cuisine. We, if you. If you go to like a Chipotle or something like that, they serve like sour cream in one of those kind of amazing, like caught gun kind of setup thing. There's a restaurant called Fuddruckers. <laughs> yes, there o- is. I've only been there once, but they have two giant, two, three giant pumps one for mayonnaise, one for ketchup, and one for uh, nacho Mustard. cheese. Oh, no, yeah. nacho <laughs> cheese. So I just took my burger and did what any normal person would do and cover that fucker with nacho <laughs> cheese. <laughs> Oh, and at first you're like, this is not mustard, and then you're like, oh, now I'm into this. This, this is oh, not mustard. <laughs> now, actually, uh, Fuddruckers, most of them closed, yeah. believe it or not, but uh, they've... Uh, they lo- I nacho cheese it. was a loss leader for them. <laughs> okay, no, the the thing was, the thing about Fuddruckers was, or at least last time I, I went there, was the burger sizes start at half a pound. Yeah. The hamburger, the smallest hamburger you can get is a half a pound, wow. and it goes up from there. So if you want a one-pound hamburger, go to Fuddruckers. I do. 
I really do. Yeah, you should. <laughs> because it's amazing. Yeah. That, that is the one thing I'll say. So. And I think we were sort of alluding to this the other day when talking about um, low cost monkeys. Like, man versus food has pretty much convinced me I need to go to the US and eat something there because everything looks so good. <laughs> Did you see That's by good. the end of that show that guy was just started ballooning he up? Had, he his had doctor a, said, yeah. "Dude, he had to quit after the third season." His doctor's like, "You are going to die of a heart attack and high cholesterol." Wasn't there like a so he, series where? Like, yeah, he, he started get, a new series where he watches other yeah. people eat and like cheers <laughs> them on. It's, but then it's they started America. America. couldn't. They started it over with a new guy, and he just he was already starting like you know. With one hand tied behind his back, he wasn't a, a skinny guy. And, like, I mean, I'm not talking. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> not good. It's okay. Idol, tell tell phase. me, tell me more about your builder's lasagna. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. yes. Plaster and spackle lasagna. <laughs> Honestly, this the climax is not as good as the joke now, but it wasn't very good. Title you sexy. <laughs> it was, it was, mostly, well, it was I mean, cheese and a it's tiny because piece of mince. You, it's because you got the builder's grade lasagna. You needed That's to go, true. you know, for a. I didn't get yeah. trade. I, I didn't get my trade points. Yeah. <laughs> my B and Q lasagna. <laughs> I can't imagine something more dire, Christ. Yeah. yeah so, <clears throat> my wife and I married in the U.S., but, <clears throat> and and she was living here in Germany. So, three weeks before the wedding, she came here to take a big trip with her friends. So they went all around the West to national parks and stuff. <clears throat> Pardon me. And they were like, and they were blown away by the amount and quality of the food. Like they'd stop at some, some <clears throat> little restaurant out in the middle of nowhere where like the, the closest gas station is 400 miles away. And they'd pay like seven fifty for a meal and these giant they have like a forklift bring out the plates to them and <laughs> and they wrapped it up in like eight tupperwares and they would eat off it for the rest of the week so they you know she took so many pictures and told so many stories so they're not all great but the one thing us does do pretty well is food so mm. yeah and then and then you you have your first golden corral experience and then <laughs> it just tier 10 <laughs> golden corral no, it, well okay Okay, it is. It is a buffet, a buffet where everyone sneezes on the buffets. Oh, basically, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it's it's a it's a buffet that if you m imagine your average American middle school cafeteria uh, level cuisine, I would say that's about <laughs> on par. Oh. No, well, see, the right thing was, stuff. it's like we. Well, yeah, well, because you know, it's. Uh, it's like the old joke, you know, it's like, you know, I got, uh, I got your dinner tonight, but uh, there's a, there's two lots of news, one good and one bad. And what, okay. So what's the good news? The only thing, I mean, what's the bad news? The only thing we got to eat is horse shit. Well, well then what's the good news? There's plenty of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's golden corral. <laughs> Are you but, in marketing uh, by any chance? <laughs> Ah, well, you know, I, I, I have a degree in right. journalism. It's how so, many of uh, you, for how many of you has COVID ruined um, buffets? Because like, yeah. I, I didn't love them yeah. before, but I, I would eat there. Now I'm like, I'm not going within a, love a buffet. 10 mile range. I love Chinese buffets. Like, I love just, yeah. yes. you know, that, that kind of stuff. And you know, there's a really good one. Because I went, I went to university in Manchester and there was a really great one up there. And they used to do like steam buns and like the proper steamers and everything like that. And it was a great price. And now I'm just like, oh, I don't want to touch things that everyone else has touched. Maybe like, I'll, I'll look and see what they've got. It's like, can we all have our own spoons for like serving? Like, that'd be great. <laughs> You had to bring your own giant novelty spoon and just be like, mm. <laughs> yes, a giant ladle. I, I have gone to one buffet since the uh, COVID apocalypse, and it was a Chinese buffet. Uh, and I have lived to tell the tale, mm. so uh, you know, you're okay. That's one one data point in your statistical you're just analysis. You're strengthening your immune system. You're doing God's work. So More buffets. Exactly. So speak, so speaking healthier. of buffets, I have another story about this Mallorca holiday. Like we, we the, the, the breakfast, okay. the breakfast was a buffet breakfast. It wasn't a plaster as breakfast. This was all, you know, this is organic food. This is real <laughs> okay. stuff. Okay. But it was, all like, uh -huh. it was all like fried breakfast, eggs. It was pretty decent. But the problem was, so you're on holiday. Like when you're on holiday and you don't have kids, you, you get up at pretty late hour, you know, somewhere between like nine, 10 o'clock or you know, probably later if you've been drinking. Like this was served 
served between seven and nine and after nine o'clock you weren't allowed mm -hmm. in bearing in mind we would wake uh -huh. up at 10 to 9 every morning and go oh shit, this is the worst holiday ever we'd wake up 10 to 9 and go shit we need <laughs> breakfast and we would just have all the leavings like christ i don't want to have to set an alarm on my holiday to get breakfast <laughs> this is terrible <laughs> anyway yeah it was it was like that. Oh, I like to imagine that it's like nine oh one, and then they just like grab a gigantic like castle style, style like a uh, slab of wood, put it through the door, and it's like yeah, <laughs> backed onto a club. Um, as no, well, it's, so well, the they'll just they'll just pelt you with a handful of donuts as they're shutting the door. It's like here, pleb, <laughs> breakfast is over. Yeah, and this have an apple. Trip, this last trip to Madeira. And they closed at ten, which is like reasonable. People ought to be able to yeah. get down by nine thirty, mm. but we were we we're so knackered by the end of the day. So we'd get down there at the last possible minute, eat breakfast, and then calculate the number of minutes we had to lay in bed before we could go like swim or hike or whatever. <laughs> it was like it was planned around st stomach pains were a part of the equation <laughs> as we planned our day. Yeah, I tell you what though, I don't. I guess I didn't tell this story on. There's a restaurant there. We did. We did the Crete pizza special basically. Once we found this place, we went there as often as we possibly could. Mm -hmm. And there was because it was in. I forget the name of the town already. Santa something it was right on the right on the eastern Santa edge. Santa Claus, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's Santa, Santa Cruz. Santa Tina. Close Faith. enough. <laughs> And so there was one street in the whole town that had restaurants. And they were all like crammed in there. So we were taking a cab back from the other side of the island. And, and we're like, we, we asked the guy, hey, do you know what, where, where there's a good restaurant there? He said, well, I've never been there, but just go to the one that has the most people go. standing outside. <laughs> That's what the sour cream was in. <laughs> dude garrick is such a dad he's he's in the, he's in the unfinished basement he's got all the tools laying around that's uh that's the life let me give you the grand tour <laughs> oh wow uh, sponsored by dewalt oh, look at that. <laughs> i thought stars was al borland but apparently yeah. tim the tool man taylor i don't think so <laughs> Yeah, so the, uh, we go to the, the street and we pick the one with the longest line, which is not the one we we're going to go to. And it was fantastic. There's this old guy that was as round as we, he was tall, and and he waited on us. He had like seven sons that all looked like clones. <laughs> and um, so we it ordered was something. Like a TNG episode. <laughs> we, they Way had the, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> they had the menu in Portuguese and then in English, which was like a bad translation. So we ordered chopped meat, which is like the least, <laughs> the least delicious sounding is chopped meat, and it was, and it was beef tips in red wine and garlic sauce with fried oh. polenta and hand cut fries, mm -mm. and then they had this like garlic bread on the side, and oh mm. my god, it was it was literally the best. <clears throat> I eat the. Eat the plenty, eat the fries, eat the beef, and then you have the sauce, and you take this garlic bread, and you soak up the sauce, mm. and you and take rub it, it that directly bite. on your face. My cheeks on my chest aerate. That one bite was like literally me. the most flavorful bite of food I've ever had, and my wife has like. She recorded video of me just going, oh, just like. <laughs> oh, we need that video. We need that video. Just Homer yeah. Simpsoning your way through the food. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And so I think we went there like four times that last week, and it was so good. And Just and I had the. <laughs> what are you watching? No, I'm, I'm logging into the game. Yeah, my phone's oh, okay. run out of battery. No, you're just like watching a TNG episode. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> but don't forget, Auto, best enjoyed with the sound on. Yeah, that's true. Okay. We promise. When um. My honeymoon, we went to a little uncle Legomera, and it was sort of my dad. My dad bought us the honeymoon and said, Right, no Christmas bed, you go to this place here. And there was a load of we, we stayed there, and there was a few building works on. And the owner of the place said, Apologies for building works, it's all over now. As uh, a thanks, we'll give you as a thanks, we'll give you a uh, free barbecue on us, no expense spared. Like, they literally had like s like seven people around different grills serving loads of different. It was absolutely gorgeous. Ooh, but the nice. funniest part was. 
sort of you go around and you sort of have your meats and everything you, you, know, you get your second orders and um, they said alright we're now doing the desserts the desserts are coming out all different types of like cakes and all sorts of things so we went up there and um, sort of got in the queue and then we went I was like I'll have a bit of the cheesecake I'll have a bit of the uh, the strawberry ganache and all this you know and walk past and we're walking past with about three or four desserts on a plate and people are looking at us going they've got more than one you can do that. <laughs> I just want the people going, I'm going to get... It's literally the scene from The Hobbit. He's got a pint. You know, it's like people just go, I'm going to get three or four. Like, people just being polite and just going, oh, we'll just have the one, please. And like, me and my wife are just like, nah. We're taking all... This is, this is free. We're taking all we can. <laughs> So yeah, everybody was being civilized, and then you barbarians showed oh, yeah. up and just started taking everything that wasn't nailed down Too and right. just ruined it for everybody. Yeah, the more restaurant costs, the more emboldened yes, you are to mm. fill your plate. It doesn't yeah. say you can only take one. There was no sign saying I couldn't. That's that's my view on life. <laughs> Have you U.S. guys ever heard of Texas Day Brazil? Yes. It's Texas, Brazil, um, Fusion. Basically, the gauchos come by with a giant yeah. skewer with the meat oh, of the Brazilian uh, steak. The, the, the big, um, <clears throat> yeah, the yeah, big the, long thing that they just carve off. Yeah, of, right, they'll carve it off for you. This long, that wide. Yeah. Oh, is that called Chara? Pogo de Chao is, is my specific. Yeah, Chara Skewer. Yeah. yeah, I've got a card game called that, which is, is I've got a card game, which is all about eating the most amount of meat you can. That's how I know about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I always win. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> No, it is it is my my go to for if I want to treat myself with food, that is that is the kind of I, I go to Fogo de Chao, but it's the same exact concept. Yeah, but that's that is the ultimate in food indulgence and eating until you are physically ill, because <laughs> so you can't you can't stop it. You it's just like, they just keep coming around with the skewers, and it's like you want some more. Of course, I want some more. No, I can't. Yeah. I don't know where I'm going to put it, but yes, I want more. <laughs> Because this is Texas this one's crusted in Parmesan cheese now, so okay, I, well I got to try that now. Good grief! <laughs> I see a Santa hat. Hey, yeah. poop pee. Is oh, that the poop pee? that's not the poop pee. Yes. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Oh, yeah. They've brought me Reese's trees. Wow, what good kids! See, yeah. this is the entire reason you had kids. You must really. take after their mom. I mean, it's at least 85% of the reason. <laughs> was the it was up to 88% on a good day. I was going to say, was the other 15% mm -hmm. enthusiasm, or do we not need to go there? <laughs> no, it's to leave me leftovers of their food so I can eat it oh, at dinner yeah, time. Yeah, we, already, we already went over that. So what's next on the schedule for uh, Food Lines Talks? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dude, when we're all dead within the next like three years, they can trace it back to this video Speak and show yourself, our I'm widows. Live forever. All right, Riker, calm hey, the fuck down. Thank you. <laughs> off, off your plaster lasagnas. <laughs> it's very fortifying, you know. Full of rich irons <laughs> and calcium. It appears that this lasagna can be used to build a wall in Age of Empires oh, 2. It's is, very we, strange. We've got to have all had a oh, you dinner, went to, yeah. yeah, that is more sort of like concrete than actual like food. That You know, someone's grandmother has cooked them a meal. You're just like, I'm going to eat this out of politeness and nothing else. <laughs> so I'm going I'm going to Latvia to my wife's family in a couple of weeks. And we're there for three weeks, I think. Every single meal is potatoes and meat and sauce and dill. And yeah, I'm a meat eater, but like last time I was there, I pulled my wife aside after like day 10. I'm like, I want a salad so bad right now. <laughs> and they won't, the only thing green they serve are homemade pickles. It's like your only reprieve from the constant starch and meat influx. So oh, wow. it's great, but it's, it's a little rough after a while. I'm just in Reese's mode over here, so I mean, you guys <laughs> no, carry on. Fine. We're, we're just watching you enjoy yourself. Oh, yeah. It's fine. B Big shared a photo on Discord right after Halloween of all the candy he stole from his children. <laughs> this is bad for you. I'm taking this away as an executive health decision. <laughs> the dad tax. No, Garrett, this, do you do I mean, the dad it, tax? Um, yeah, the stuff they don't want. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that, it's it's not a tax. It's it's eminent domain. It's it's like I. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking this for the state. You'd the make state a great police me. officer. Exerting your cat's <laughs> yeah. belly over the uh, <laughs> the titles of the suites. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. How about that food, huh? Yeah. Mm. 
<laughs> Should have you know what? I, I have a question, and it's dangerously close to being on topic. Um, and I'm kind of curious to know what you guys might think on this. What is on topic? Uh, anything tonight. What's the topic? So... There's like an, uh, a pretty obvious discussion to be had about like you know the best Star Trek villains. You know you got like Khan, you got the Borg Queen, you got any number of like you know one offs. What's the worst Star Trek villain? Like the one that you don't take seriously, or that you find the lamest, or that's the worst performance, or they just turned up and you were like, get off the screen. Shinzon. Sorry, Sky. Michael Burnham. <laughs> uh, no, okay. I <laughs> let's think. Um, is a Devanani Rawl a, a villain? No, <sighs> nah, he's, he's a foil, he's but I wouldn't say he's a villain. See, I, oh, I would you, like I, Ferengi, but the Ferengi are more comic relief than than villains. What about the pipe cleaner people in TOS? Um, <laughs> <laughs> From Cat's Paw? Oh yeah. My God. <laughs> yeah God. Dude, he could have just said Cat's Paw and, and the discussion would have been over at that point. <laughs> but now let me let, let me think some more about this because there's there's gotta be some some real winners and stinkers that we haven't Carnass is one of them because I, I watched that the Mark Jameson too short a season is it episode recently, yeah. and I, I even said in in our Discord I'm like this Carnass guy is ripped straight from the original series. He's like over enunciating every word and he's pointing at Picard every time he says a sentence. He's, like, he's still the same character he was in Trouble with Tribbles. I mean that's just yeah. Michael Pataki being um, Michael Pataki. Ah, okay, didn't they, know that. They will. They didn't go. Uh... They didn't overdo it with the production values either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just put him in a Hyatt conference room with the lights off, and it's like, well, there's your set. <laughs> it looks like he's wearing freaking Jean Claude Van Damme's alternate guile costume from Street That's Fighter true. the movie. I'm gonna come up with a although I'd, I'd pay here. real money if if he could do the splits like Jean Claude oh, could. I know, I know who it is. I know oh? who it is. It's Lutan, right? Oh, mm. no scene. I'm gonna go. Sure uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, no yes, of course they would. No, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, mm, that's from really Code of strong. Honor. Yeah. I don't know if he's yeah. a villain. Yeah. It's just not just badly written. <laughs> well, I, he, he's a villain. I, he's a, he's a badly written villain. He's a, mm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's yeah. he's meant to be the main antagonist of the episode. Yeah. Yeah. I think the main antagonist mm. is the writer. <laughs> yeah. No, the main that. antagonist was the was the director, the original director oh. of the episode that decided that, you know, even though it wasn't written in the script to be this way, let's let's have this entire planet be pseudo Africans for reasons. Mm. And they did the same thing in Stargate. Same did, director, yeah. same episode. The, they were Mon yeah. they were yeah. Mongolians, but it was mm. the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Although I have to yeah. say, I did I did like <clears throat> the way they showcase Yar in like the first half of the episode. She's a badass. She does. I, if we ever get like martial arts Yar, where she's a keto vanish and flipping around the holograms and oh, stuff, yeah. that'd be cool. Okay. Or like Mok, well, you can, I guess you could say Mok Bar Yar. How about a controversial opinion? And a <laughs> villain that I think I don't really like and is just there to be a villain is Armus. I don't think he's a he's he's malevolent, but I don't think he there's no point to him, other than he's wait, just like wait. we need to have someone that is just pure evil. Along that same line, what about the Sheliak? Yeah, he's like the arm. He's like Armus uh, if he oh, was no, a the lawyer. The Sheliak were very kind of like sort of letter of the law. Yeah, <laughs> dude, Garrick, you're funnier than the rest of us combined, but it only comes out in spurts, like every few oh. minutes, and so it's like pure condensed hilarity. I love you, dude. Thanks. But yeah, it's like <laughs> it, they even did like a Futurama episode kind of oh, like yeah, they did, didn't they? where they're negotiating with brain balls and it's just like <laughs> ripped straight from that essence of command. Like <laughs> you cannot condone bouncing of the seventh variety per treaty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I, just, oh, uh, I think even the writers knew they screwed up with with Skin of Evil. Because then they mm. brought Yar back for what yesterday's Enterprise, mm. and the whole plot was like my death was completely senseless, and we need to rectify yeah. it. Mm. So, yeah, 
That would have been the point, good I, point to write Yar back into the series. That would have been the point. I'd have been okay with that, yeah. actually. I really liked her. If Other they had brought the... that particular version of Yar back, that would have been an interesting mm. way of doing it, yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of like Pulaski, too. It's like just at the point where she was starting to be integrated and interesting as a member of the cast. Jeez, yeah, later, y'all. Okay. Yeah. Well, situation. the problem was that she, she oh, pro- progressed in character to the point where she could no longer be sexually assaulted like Crusher and Troy, so they had to leave. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. Before we go down that path, Jenos redeemed a question in chat, and this is the most applicable stream for this question of all time. Please describe your philosophy on napping, and we'll go counterclockwise <laughs> through all the dads first. I I, I don't know what. We're, we're oriented on the the actual screen. I'm just watching through our recording stream. So who's first? You're holding the talking ball, so you talk first. Ah, crap. Um, well, my uh, you say my philosophy on napping. Philosophy on napping. It's a lovely idea in theory. I just don't know uh, how you actually put that into practice. Uh, I mean, I I I work, and when I come home, I have to be you know, a fully active parent of four children. So their naps are theoretical nonsense <laughs> to me, basically. Well, no, the only time that I've been able to nap is when I've been so ill that I just have to be in bed already. Then, yep. you know, I'm going to sleep. But I'm, I'm other than that, I don't page. Nap. It's just like you come home and it's just like, I've got to do children and dinner things and everything. And it's like, I, there, there's no time. Even at the weekends, I'm like, yeah. where did it's seven o'clock? Where did the time go? <laughs> it's in the evening. Like yeah. I, the naps are for the laps. Naps are a luxury for those that have the time. I am a big fan of naps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I am a I am a convert of the El Marto <laughs> school of naps. <laughs> can I can I do them? No, but do I want to? <laughs> yes. So. I'm, I'm... And, and honestly, whatever. Whatever you have planned for next week with El Marto, put the nap thing on there. Oh, just <laughs> nap on stream. <laughs> just like, right, just, two and a half hours, let's go. Just, I mean, I'm, I'm sure we can turn it in, because the doc does a ton of daydreaming. Maybe he, he can talk about the doc having a not nap philosophy. Yeah. Um, for me, I tend, I, I tend to nap only when I absolutely have to, um, and it's like a 50-50 on whether or not it's going to be pretty good, or I'm going to wake up and my mouth tastes like garbage, <laughs> and I feel like I, I, I got anti-sleep somehow. Um, usually the only improvement in my physical state will be, oh, my feet don't hurt. Wonderful. Um, yeah. The only sort of like way I can have a nap that actually like accomplishes its goal is, is I've gotten into the habit of having a nap right before I do my um, GMing for my uh, my tabletop stuff. And that is a very specific, okay, I've got like two, three hours, I have to get up by this time. And then it's like, I don't know if it's a case of my body sets a clock and is like, this is an important thing you have to be awake for and rested for. And then it's like, okay, fine, these naps will be fine. But if I try and nap any other time, it's not, not problem, happening. I think the problem is, like, I've got too much stuff to do I, like, I look at my day and i'm like right i need to do this by this by this by this by this and then i've got like things to show to do and i've got things from work to do and it's like, it's like i've got no time to nap I, I can't if i take a two half an hour nap i'm freaking out because i've not done certain things that i should have done like <laughs> well, so well, I mean, it's kind of an extent extension of uh you know the being a, a parent and then when you get to bed you're like okay well i should sleep now hmm. but it's like this is the only time that i have that's that's just for me so it's like, you know, it takes an extra 20, 30 minutes to go to bed just so you can I'm not gonna do waste what you actually down. <laughs> 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 mm-hmm. those, those spreadsheets don't write themselves. They really though. don't. Mm. Although I'm working on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when they do, then you'll Machine find out. Machine learning. Mm-hmm. So I've got one final addition for the oh, uh, God, all time aw- awful Star I, Trek I uh, villains. Well. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, my Nero. thoughts on napping are that I would <laughs> I would like to, but I always wake up with a migraine, so I don't. All right, back to villains. Yeah, and no, I'm waking up with yeah. I, I feel I feel that actually migraines. Um, Nero from Star Trek 09. Um, I quite um, liked him. I didn't mind that. What is Blue his Albano? character? What's yeah, Eric, uh, Eric Banner. Banner. Yeah, so Blue Albano, same thing. 
the the character was kind of lost in translation a lot. There was a lot of backstory they just didn't bother to explain in the film, which was a shame. Okay. So yeah. I, I've got a problem with this, okay? So this is the exact same problem I have with people who say that, um, like, the extended version of Batman vs. Superman is good or whatever. Mm. If you cannot make your two-hour oh, movie yeah. in such a way that I understand your villain <laughs> and what's going on, then you have failed as a director. That's not a case of, oh, well, it's fine if you watch the four-hour cut. Motherfucker. You bought my two hours. <laughs> you don't get to go, I'll do it again better next time. I'm like, no, that's another four hour buy in. Fuck you, do it right the first time. So in the movie, he has this like scimitar esque super ship. But I go and yeah. read the backstory. They're like, he's a lowly freighter pilot from Romulus. I'm like, yeah. how is his freighter oh, end, up, end up stronger than oh, all no, the other ships? Like, 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 modded out mining. They had nothing bad to do than stick Borg bits onto yeah. a mining vessel. Yeah, yeah sure. Would have been cool. I, I don't know. I kind of find that a little bit cool. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Wait, well, I, I, since we're talking about uh, Snaps movie villains, I, I, all I, all I want to say is I see your Nero and I raise you Ruafo. Nah, I've got time for Ruafo. Ruafo's yeah, yeah. over the top. Just for the one scene... Where uh, Dowerty is like, you know, um, <laughs> no, 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 it's not like that. It's like, um, you know, uh, perhaps uh, um, Captain McCard and I, no! and then just like yeah. the spurting yeah. blood. And then like <laughs> Picard has this look on his face like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I think by, by virtue of it being F. Murray Abraham, it's a minimum tier six character for me. But you're right. Yeah. The, the rest of the actual writing doesn't do very much for him. Okay. Well, he, um, he, was, yeah. he was decent in Scarface, so I'll give him a pass. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will give you the ultimate of worst thought out villains in worst episodes of Star Trek, and we're going to talk about Janice Lester, who was just bad. She was just pissed off at Kirk. And then you had a trial. Yeah, the whole episode, this. the final episode of Star Trek, is just a really shit trial. So I, I, I feel like that's the most appropriate way it could have ended, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to social issues, and we're not going to get into that whole thing here, but I find I, th I think it's fair to say I'm far less sensitive to all that stuff than than most people, at least in my circle. That being said, William Shatner strutting around with his hands on his hips, acting almost like a like a stereotypical gay man so from the nice. '60s. It was like this is just. And you're going to end your series on this? Like, oh my well, god. Well, they got cancelled, so maybe not yeah, entirely but, their fault. But, yeah, yeah, but it doesn't take more than a few minutes to be like, let's just swap the viewing order here. Yeah. Let's, let's Dude, it was awful. Awesome. rough spots, but it does have some good episodes too. Yeah. All right, uh, Evans and Wales. Buried a lead like that. Evans and Wales and Chess says, should have done a follow-up with the species who created Armus, turning out like the indecisive Kirk when he gets split. Hmm. Uh, they should have made so ancient humanoid who we're all tapping away for. Just make yes. them the creators of Armis and like they used to be flawed like other humanoids, and then when they got rid of Armis, they became this enlightened species. Or something. Well, I always um, I don't know if it was a thing from the books or if it was just someone's head cannon, uh, but someone suggested that they were um, the species that became the Metrons or the Organians. So, okay. you know, the ultra angelic, like, like corp and uh, non corporeal beings, like, that's what happens. You shed off your evil and you become like that. Original what? series' greatest um, contribution to the Trek universe is they had so many one off god species that you can attribute everything else in the show yeah. to. <laughs> it was the Metro. It, yeah, anytime there's like, I remember season two of Discovery launched, and obviously you had the sort of the Red Angel coming out, and people were like, it's the Organians. No, it's the Metrons. No, it's the, it's the, the whatever the. It's the Iconians. The Iconians, the like, Iconians yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mean, yeah. <laughs> there's like so many theories. Like, no, no, it's just Burnham <laughs> in a suit. One of my. <laughs> Burnham, um, unbelievably powerful species that could never be destroyed. You know, like same thing. There Whatever. It is. <laughs> two. I'm up to two today. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite parts of Picard was that random pull from like a, a season one episode of Voyager, where they had uh, the, the, the teleporter. Yeah, yeah the Sakarian yeah. teleporter. 
Because yeah. they name dropped Sicarians. I'm like, what? I went back and checked memory off. I'm like, that dude really? The guy yeah. the, with the bad accent they hit on the, Janeway the to pull Matt back yeah. in 2020? Uh, they probably, got they his. Think yeah, sorry, go. <laughs> I'm glad that he got his. That's all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> you are making things extremely unpleasurable for me. It was like a bad Ricardo Maldobon almost, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, eat eat nano probes. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of, if anyone's watched the new Hawkeye series, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but there is an actor there that plays um, Echo's father, and I looked at him, and he came on the screen. And I went, "If you want a new Khan on the screen, get that guy," because there's like, "Holy crap, that's like Ricardo Montalban replaced." He's not quite as hench and there's not as much chest, but he's got the same kind no. of mannerisms. I thought that would be. Yeah. <laughs> He'll never be able to replace that. <laughs> <laughs> more chest than man. <laughs> Broke the mold after that one. Mm. Well, I gotta head out, guys, but uh, no, it was nice talking yeah, to yeah. you. Yeah. Pleasure having you, man. No. Yeah. No. I'll you see care. you soon. Cheers for the show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, that goes all Dude, I love potential. <laughs> yeah. Well, Lights on out of the universe. For these I wish Garrett could be a regular on the show, but... <laughs> Time zones, man. They're a bitch. Yeah. As we know with our yeah. Star Trek Adventures planning. <laughs> well, I yeah, will say... And, uh, might, that's been a real fucking have, annoyance. We might as well talk about it, because this is what we had, you know, briefly talked about when uh, we came up with the idea to do this crazy thing today, is that, you know, I U.S. people uh, being on your show... Yeah. Time zones oh, okay. and, and other things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, it's it's it's. I I want to be on this show every episode that you have them. I mean, I, I would love to be on every Wednesday, but I I can't because uh, I I work. Uh, I'm still at work. Uh, when the show starts, I have to make special arrangements to be on here, which I'm I'm happy to do. I love doing it. By the way, if you guys uh, don't know, Big makes the Jello that the bad ladies wrestle in. So that's his. <laughs> <laughs> That's his job at work. <laughs> Please he just as an essential worker. It's true. Yeah. Keep yeah. So I. Yeah. Never taking a day off. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, You're a public but... servant. <laughs> now I'm just imagining so... Big coming to this giant like set, and then like that big um navigator alien from Dune is like <laughs> the Jello must flow. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no, hey, man, I don't, I, if, if, the, if the space alien says the jello must flow the jello must flow <laughs> no it's like I, I come in with like an ambient temperature monitor it's like it's 81 <laughs> degrees in here this stuff is not gonna set ah! <laughs> no. you've got one of those giant pools like uh, oh, that, that episode with Ambassador <laughs> Steric where they have the aliens no, come on, yeah. and Jordy and Wesley are working with this giant, like, strobe lighting pool, and they have to get it just right. They're stirring this big pot. Uh, right. But anyway, no, what, what, we, what <coughs> we had talked about was some way that, you know, we, we all as a, as a foursome and maybe, you know, more people like, like Garrick, the, the U.S. crowd could uh, be on a show uh, on the weekends. Uh, so that we could do this kind of thing regularly. And we didn't have, a, obviously, have a ton of great ideas on what we wanted to do right off the bat. Uh, but that, I mean, maybe that's a good thing for, to just bring up to anybody yeah. listening here. It's like, what would you, what would you want a, yeah. a show, a, a non-timelines specific show featuring us for mm. Mucklucks? To be about, yeah, I we've mean, thought what... about two things like because obviously the three you know, uh, me, Stars, and Auto, we're sort of this kind of started with us being sort of European based, so that was kind of where the times and a lot of our viewers sort of lament that you know they can't join us live because of work and whatever, and it is a great pain point. But unless we stay up to three o'clock in the morning, there's not a lot we can do. But I've you know, I've always yeah. opened the idea of like because you know, we can share things like the stream key with someone else wants to stream it if you have the technical know how to say, yeah, I'm going to jump on for the American crowd and do the. American timelines talks, you know, with eagles and flags and <laughs> whatever it is you do over there. We're going yeah. to damage our brand. From the last uh, Timelines Awards show, I think. Oh, yes. Uh, actually, yeah. in a little over a week from now. Mm. 
uh, Maverick from Top Gun will be bad. So. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Worldwide, Pitbull himself, <laughs> will be back. <laughs> so did you call me Pitbull or Pimple? Because both kind of apply in this case. Uh, all right, Mr. Take Gorch. <laughs> it is a Gorch. So. Um, yeah, as Cranky said, Booter wanted to come and talk about his event. And yes, I have spoken to Booter. We need to uh, work out a time, but we're not. I think it's going to be sometime next year now, which is not that far away. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely get Booter on at some point. Maybe yeah, long after a nice event long event. holiday break. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get yeah. there. It's, it's, it's hard scheduling around these things, and it's hard because obviously we want you in as much as we can, big, you know, because of your insightful knowledge into timelines that is not of any other's ability. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things. <laughs> yeah. And seeing as I'm doing well, I all the you- streaming and no one else is, <laughs> it's kind of like, it's. Well, I'm on, you're on. you know what the <laughs> idol, that's the whole thing of everyone yeah. wants to be in a tabletop party and no one wants to GM. Yeah. <laughs> it's lucky we have two GMs, so that's kind of handy. But yes, now like you don't get to swap off, and every time it happens, we're like, oh yeah, get to play! Yeah, yeah exactly. And it's like, but now we just can't get everyone to synchronize at the moment, so yeah. It'll, it'll yeah. happen, it'll happen. We'll get it. My fault, really, but yeah. No, we'll get it's, no, it's not that. We'll get it, we'll get it going. But we made some cool Klingons last night. We got some good, good Klingons. Yes, yeah, so I should be watching that show probably tomorrow afternoon uh, for my, my lunch. Should be good fun. You guys are getting quite into it. It's quite good. It's good fun. Um, so it is twenty days until the day of you know. Oh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they like, like um, Zephyr Cochran had did the first warp flight. I'm pretty sure that's what it is in twenty days, right? First right. Well, first contact day. Yeah. Is that really? Gosh. Yeah. Didn't, no, know that, yeah. didn't know that happened at Christmas. Yeah. Is that what happened after World War Three? <laughs> like no one, because you never see them celebrate Christmas in Star Trek, do you? Apart from Generations, yeah, a few times. TOS. There's like five oh, yeah. or six references in all okay. of Trek, but yeah. remember we looked this up. Okay. Um, yeah, it was for a past show. We 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 did like a Christmas show or oh, something. We did, didn't we? Oh yes, I forgot about that. Okay, yeah. scrap my entire conversation tree then. <laughs> Basically, Jesus was a cybernetic Borg uh, drone sent down to assimilate Earth. That makes so much but sense. But he was a baby and he couldn't reach the levers, so it didn't happen. <laughs> now I'm just picturing like the nativity, but it's just one of those little Borg babies from like Best of Both Worlds or whatever. No, wait, it's, it's the little Interceptor class from Armada. It, you know, it looks sort of, yeah. <laughs> looks oh, yeah, sort of like a... Yeah, that was a Roddenberry thing. He didn't want too much religion on the show because he felt. I like... mean, yeah, he'll say that, but then he'll be like, you know, we can sort of one god plenty fine. So it's like, well, that's a bit of a double standard, ain't it, Gene? Yeah, but you, I mean, there's a lot of speeches, um, like Chicote and Janeway have a conversation. I think uh, Archer does at one point about. Oh, Picard does, and who watches the watch? I'm not going to send them back to superstition, basically, with the idea of a god. Yeah. L- no. Let's let's not get too no, down no. the religion but, path. But okay, let's tangent on it, this. Um, how much do you think Roddenberry was involved in the Final Frontier and God being the the main villain there, or was that Shatner? Not at all. Yeah, I was gonna none say, whatsoever. Yeah. 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 Like four, I can see the involvement. But in fact, wait, 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 hang on. When did Roddenberry die? It was like what? Um, ninety two. Yeah. Ninety two. Like yeah. Final Frontier was um, eighty eight. Like, Wait, his fingerprints cool? are all over Undiscovered um, Country. Like, but yeah. Final Frontier, no, that's a uniquely Shatner disaster. If it was 92, then he should be resurrecting sometime next year. That's, that's three decades from... <laughs> is, th- is this the real Q and on, but it's actually Q? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to wait outside a train station for the revival of uh, Gene Rod Roddenberry. John F. Roddenberry Jr. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think God as as like the villain of the piece was so odd because TOS was littered with omnipotent, no. like Apollo. He's like, I was there yeah. when you were mere children on Earth. Mm. So yeah. there's a whole bunch of super I mean, beings entire... that claim to be from... Yeah. The entire show of Stargate is based around that entire premise that gods came to Earth, but the fact they were aliens all along, like that is that is Apollo, but transponded. I mean, if you want to, if you want to think about it in a philosophical terms, I I want to say that the the Star Trek future would be one of you know maybe religion being much more of a personal mm-hmm. thing, 
where you just do it for yourself and it's just not part of public life public mm. uh, well know, yeah you kind of see that a lot with um the bajorans to a degree where like there's yeah. like a very public part of it but then there's people like kira who cold kind of hold their beliefs a lot more personally mm. And Worf also sp- significantly has a very personal relationship with, like, you know, the whole clean spirituality. He's spiritual, that... isn't he? He's, you know, he's, yeah, he's it, but it almost never comes up because he always keeps it strictly to himself. He well, doesn't it really doesn't talk come about up as often. much because he's among humans. They dial back yeah. religion for humans, but they allow it for other races. Mm. Mm. Like, yeah. w- when they when they get into the Klingon backstory, it's, it's very much... Um, it's like superstition board, bordering on religion almost. Because uh, well, there's a delineation the of, of the thing myth they bel- and religion. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's the myth. Because, you know, if you tear a lock of your hair off and forge it into steel in a pit of lava, like... It's very bio. It is, that <laughs> doesn't seem metallurgically sound. Just to... <laughs> hey, man, the, the, the lava does not respect a fool. <laughs> There was a very cool scene in Babylon 5, because Babylon 5 kind of also did the same kind of thing where they didn't address religion, but they had one scene at the end, and I can't remember the context of it, but it was the Commander Sinclair showing sort of an alien dignitary, and he said, I'm going to meet, you're going to come and meet the best of humanity, and he just leads him down a long line of people and say, this is so-and-so of the you know, the Christian order, this is so-and-so of the Jewish order, this is X a person, he's, he's a Muslim, and he kind of goes through all the different religions and different world leads, and that was the kind of they're touching on, this is humanity's best interest, we're all equal here. We all have our own personal beliefs, and I quite I quite like that. Mm. Except for androids who are less equal than everyone yeah, well, else. Yeah, fuck them. What have they done lately? <laughs> <laughs> blinky, blinky motherfuckers. How dare they? You try and turn that turtle upside down on the side of the road. You see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If if I can be if if we can be vulnerable for a second, because mm. I don't think I've ever oh, dear. really chatted about this with my buddies before. What? Uh, are there episodes that get they get you guys into tears every time? Because for me, it's it's for me it's the offspring at the end when Halftail comes out and says Data's hands are moving so fast he couldn't fun. keep up with that one. There's Inner Light where yeah, he's, Picard's yeah. talking to his wife at the end and she's about to go. Um, there's a visitor with old Jake Cisco, oh, yeah. and and when his and when um, Ben Cisco comes back, he says, "Son, you have to live your life." That makes me think about my dad. So, are there any episodes where, no matter how many times you see it, it's like you at least a, a tear or two? Um, my, episodes. My heart, my heart no. is cold. So, no, yeah, just me. I'm okay, good dead. to know. Thanks, I'm guys. Dead no, dead no, you, like. well, the, no. The the thing is, you've you've you already picked all the ones that I would have picked. So mm. it's like I don't I don't have much to. Well, to you don't add need to, to innovate like on it, but. So here, here's the thing. Like I'll yeah, watch. I'd, any any kind of like tragic story and I'll not be moved or any kind of like tragic sort of Star Trek show or even like something that's supposed to be deeply emotional and then I'll watch something like Wreck It Ralph and by the end I'll be like, <laughs> like it'll just for some reason like a Pixar film will just hit me while I'm watching with my son I'll be like why is this happening like <laughs> Wreck It Ralph <laughs> um, so misunderstood <laughs> for, for me uh, I can't think of many episodes that get me outright like 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 teary uh, movies. Absolutely, uh, Ralph Khan absolutely gets me every single time with. I said testing. Ralph at all. Khan. I'm like, is that a crossover <laughs> with a wreck it Ralph? <laughs> it's like Ralph with like his hand against the glass. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's Spock, Spock's test scene gets me every time. Like, even though I've seen it like maybe thirty or forty times, like those two yeah. just do it. It's just a perfect expression of grief and loss. And the feeling of watching the, your better half die is like, I can put myself in that situation and it hurts. And I, I don't cry over it anymore, but I definitely do f- feel the pain of it. Um, okay. Oh, sorry. And not so much like teary, but latent image always gets an emotional mm-hmm. reaction out of me from Voyager. Um, for those of you who don't recall it, cause it's not, a, a, I don't think many people talk about it too often. Um, it's an episode where the doctor basically discovers that parts of his memory have been tampered with. Oh, right. Um, because he finds some um, like scarring on Harry Kim. And he's like, I don't remember doing this operation, but it's definitely me. I even know my technique. And it turns out that um, he had performed surgery on Harry and another ensign about like a, a year and a half ago. Uh, 
Um, and he'd had to make the choice of which one do I have to let die? I can't do both surgery at the same time. One of them will die. I have to make the choice. Um, and initially, it's like, okay, fine. This is a triage situation. What's the what's the conflict here? Um, and then it cuts to this scene in the mess hall where he's talking with Neelix about um, synthetic antigens and all that kind of thing. Well, he's just no, waiting and thinking about save it. the full recap for three days from now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is, is going to set in a piece. But um, there, like, there is just an amazing scene there where Picardo is just acting in this way and it's so fundamentally uncomfortable and raw. But I also just, like, I feel that. Like, I don't know how I would react in that situation. Like, I relate to it a little bit too much. And that always gets a very raw reaction out of me, especially how they end up resolving it at the end of the episode. It's like, okay, yeah, you have that, about that idea of growth. That's a very, that gets me in a way. That very much gets me. Oh, before I chime in, is, does that say poop pee on there? It actually doesn't. It does. Uh, it, 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 okay. it, it, where's my money? It says, I, I, I love you, dad, by, for dad, by, Amazing. by my daughter. So that's, that, see, that's that gets actually, me teary eyed. Yeah. My first thought is, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I, uh, have, having some time to think about it, I, I have a, a little bit more unconventional, uh, choice in this and it is actually uh because you can have tears for different reasons and Mm. one that strikes me is uh is lessons the the nella darren Mm. episode oh that's a good episode so the scene where they actually start playing together and picard opens up on what his music means to him and why and that moment where they actually connect and it starts to flower and actually it does it musically too and that that that's a moment and then uh the part at the end where he's not sure whether or not uh darren has lived or or died at the end and the just the pain that you see yeah he's just standing in the transport room yeah one of the strengths of one of the big it's like the focal point of picard almost is he always knows what to do like his Mm. his Strong, loving arms will carry you through whatever conundrum you have going on. And in that, that's like one of the, you can count probably on three fingers, the number of times where Picard doesn't have faith in his own abilities to command. And it's it's where he thinks he might be compromised because he does love this woman and he loves what she's brought out in him. So, Yeah. It's actual if, vulnerability. Yeah. If I can go actual. back to latent image. Um, one of the things that I actually like about that episode is the last scene because mm. I've, I know Voyager doesn't get a ton of love, but for me, it's always felt like you can feel like the crew is a family, which you don't, mm. you don't get that. And a TNG is great, but I don't see mm. like Jordy and Deanna hanging out a lot. But at the end, when doc is trying to work through his, his breakdown and they say, we're staying with you in shifts. We don't want you to be alone. We want you to have someone to talk to and connect with that makes it feel like, you know, they really are 70,000 light years away and they're, mm. and they're a family and they're looking out for each other. So, yeah, no, that, that really ties it all together. Um, so this is a scene I don't think of very often, but when I do, it always gets you me choked up. Shuttles idol. <laughs> you know? Better do. Yeah. <laughs> um, Shuttle so, check. Insurrection. It gets a ton of shit, rightfully so. Um, but, the scene, um, I think it's just after Picard has been talking to Anish, uh, and he's just walking through the Baku town, and he's basically you know, thinking about the conundrum appearing before him. Um, and it's like, you know, mid, I think it's just about the sun is about to rise, and he goes up on the hill and he sees Geordi, oh, and he, yeah. hasn't got his visor, he hasn't got his visor on, he hasn't got the implants on. He's just got these really beautiful brown eyes, and he's just like, oh, yeah. you know, um... It, it, the optic nerve has begun to regenerate um, and before he goes he wants to see the sunrise because he's never seen them at least not the way you do mm. and the way it's not because the sunrise is just like it's normal it's just like you know like the the, the, the orange blooming and it's like yeah sorry but the way that LeVar Burton looks at it I just feel just touched every single time it's just like it, it. That gets me. Mm. Like that feeling is like I connect with that. 
too. And it reminds you of <clears throat> every good Jordy scene that you can think of throughout Trek. That's him doing it with this fucking headband, hairband over yeah. his eyes. Like, imagine if he could just be LeVar Burton this whole time. Yeah. Was there a reason they yeah, dropped no, the visor think... in first contact? Did he just suddenly went, go, uh, oh, I think enough, he... enough. LeVar Burton was literally like, please just let me fucking take the thing off. It's been seven years. <laughs> 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 I also think there were problems with it. Um, like, on, on TV, obviously, it's a little bit less obvious. But when you have a wider aspect ratio and you start filming in um, at widescreen, it becomes a lot more obvious. You can see through the slats of the visor, and he's you know they're not going to make him wear the blind contacts while he's got the visor <laughs> on because that looks that's too far. That's just too much. So I think he was like, "Don't worry about it." Um, and I think the internal justification is they were like, "Look, your visor has fucked us over multiple times in the past for security <laughs> reasons. Either you get rid of it and get secure and cyber and it implants." Or you never get to work on a starship again. And Literally implants. multiple times. But you know, early I on, I at least the... three off the top of my head. <laughs> early on, I think it's like, and sorry, I'm doing shuttles while I say this. I think it's um... <laughs> here we go. Well, it would have been season two because it's an episode with Pulaski, and she's talking mm. him through getting a replacement. <clears throat> and she says it's what it's like ninety five percent safe mm. um, that, that you could have real vision. But he sort of equivocates over that 5%, and he's like, oh, I'm not sure. So it is realistic that throughout the course of a show that spans into movies, that there can be technological advancements yeah. that make that 100% safe. So, yeah. 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 No, I, I well, plus, the, it's, it wasn't a thing where they just were able to give him normal vision. That's still an enhanced vision. So, I mean, it, it's clear that that's some kind of technological uh, thing. So, I mean, it might be that he didn't want to give up the, you know, the extraness of his, uh, his visor and the things that that provides. Well, and plus, I mean, he would basically be having to learn how to see again in some, some fashion, you know, because he had used, been used to the visor type of vision his entire life. So, I mean, that would be, Another yeah, because as I recall, you do get to see what he sees in that season one episode, yeah. you know, with all the bright flashes of color, and then you get to see what it and looks like through the cybernetic implants. Stunt doubles. Yeah, um, <laughs> and in first contact, you get to see for a very brief moment what he sees because he does the zoom in to oh, see yeah. Cochrane drinking like in the long thing, distance, it? <laughs> and it's distinctly yeah. different. It is like, yeah, no, that's a very yeah. different kind of vision. I can imagine that would have fucked with him for a good little while. Right, if I can bring this yeah. back to tragically sad territory, Evans of Wales' says, doctor's family with his daughter dying. Yes, yeah, she whacks mm. her head, and Doc, with all his medical capability, can't save her. And, yeah, that's that's a big tearjerker. Yeah, that's a rough one for me. I yeah. feel like people don't use the adjective Valky enough. You remember Volky? when his son, his son hangs around with the Klingons, oh, and that's like yeah. a slur for them. That's such a Vulky idea because it's short for Vulcan, wow. which they yeah, don't like. He's hanging out with Klingons, because of course he is. <laughs> such a Vulky idea. <laughs> such a rebel. You know, I have to wonder. Like, I always thought, like, oh, yeah, that must be like the extrapolation of this program. But then I remembered, oh, wait, Torres programmed those additions. Does that yeah. mean that when she was a kid hanging out with like other Klingon kids, is that what they talked like? Such a bulky <laughs> idea. Like, that's weird. I think it's her right, payback because you know. she never liked her Klingon side, did she? So this is just like I'm going to make yeah. these guys the douchiest fucks ever. Yeah, it's not wrong. And then there I was the scene other... where you know uh, Archer had to apologize for his dog peeing on the, uh, <laughs> on the planet. That's <laughs> just With a fucking chainsaw. Yeah, yeah. dude, he mm. was the biggest yeah. dick of all time in that episode. <laughs> If you watch yeah. the Humboldt Archer episode, he refuses to make like the most token apology in order to save relations between their people. Like they could yeah, set up trade rules. Dying that go that makes share it technology, happen. but he won't apologize for his dog whizzing on their tree. So then finally, at the end, he does. And yeah, um, that being said, Enterprise does have one moment that really does tug on my heartstrings, um, and it's the actual finale of the of the show. Oh, um, yeah. the Terra Prime two parter, where they find out that um, Trip and uh, T'Pol's engineered child is not actually viable for like actual life. Like it's just she's gonna die within the next like you know day or so because it's just a clone baby designed to show off why this kind of thing can't happen. Why the races should not mix. Um, 
And there's this really tender moment between Trip and T'Pol where it, it kind of has like all those hallmarks of the best, you know, Tuvok connecting with someone or Spock connecting with someone where it's like, yes, you can tell that she is repressing the emotions, but she's still feeling them just as strongly as Trip is doing. And even the smallest of gestures means a lot coming from someone in that emotional headspace. Like that, that's a really good moment in my mind. Right. Yeah, Trip does have a good few emotional episodes. The one where he has to write um, the letter about the engineer who died, and oh, he has to write yeah, it to their yeah. family, explaining you know what he thought of her. And he's like, I can't think of anything to say. Like that's a really rough one. Can I can I just interrupt very very quickly? You probably can't see it, but Lieutenant JG Palmer has is making my shuttles. This is shuttle number twenty three. So she was at least making. For fuck's sake! <laughs> Sorry, what about her dupe? Don't she have two of us? I do actually. Yeah, that's not her. <laughs> Uh, the the uh, the cogenitor episode. That's another. Oh yeah. One where... Yeah. So that yeah, that's was... a rough one. Sim isn't, isn't Sim a good one for that? Because that's quite tragic. He has to kind of deal with. Uh, I haven't watched it for years, but he sort of deal with actually having to sacrifice himself to save the real Tucker. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, it's rough for him. Well, hold on. Let me backtrack here because this cogenitor episode, I kind of didn't like it, and maybe that's hypocritical of me because I liked early Archer. I like how he was portrayed not, well, almost bumbling kind of. He was not a captain. Yes, definitely bumbling. <laughs> and in fact with the A.G. Robinson flashback episode, that kind of points out he was not fit to be captain back then. He did things by the book. He didn't have the the maverick quality that you need to be captain. So uh, he was basically, he got captain because his dad built the engine. So yeah. I like that he was flawed in a lot of ways and he wasn't great and sometimes he flawed the handle. That being said, in this Cogenitor episode... Oh, like, yeah. I know exactly what you're going to say. It was so on the nose. You have to... Uh, a trip was way out of line. Like, you have to let other cultures, other races do their thing. You just met them. And you're going to destroy relations because you don't like the way they do things. I can understand that, but... Dude, I was really... Because at the end of that, Archer calls uh, a trip into his ready room, and he chews him out. He chews his ass. And I'm like, please demote this guy. Please demote this guy. Like, <laughs> you just destroyed relations between this technol technologically advanced race that was going to share what they know with you. Great relations. They were very friendly people with uh, Commander Tomalak in the lead, by the way, uh, as the leader of the ship. And, like, you threw that all away because you wanted to teach this, uh, the teach a cogenda read. It's like, I understand the, the misgivings, but, dude, you can't. That is so Bush League and unprofessional. Like, this is now, not your culture. If it was that, happening on Earth, in your own culture, and you want to be an activist, that's fine. But this is, like, way different, in my opinion. Now, you are absolutely correct. In the context of that episode, Trip is indeed wrong. That being said, um, you can't do that episode uh, in Enterprise with Archer, because he specifically says, you know, would I have done the same thing? And it's like, the answer is, yes, Archer. <laughs> Not only would you have done the same thing, I have seen you do the same thing. So you don't get to have the same moral high ground as literally any other captain on this matter. So yes, what you're saying is correct, but the instant you said, I wouldn't have done this, I'm like, Okay, but but hypocritical, though, is also part of his character because he's not the perfect... He's not the prototypical... Well, I guess he's, he's the, the prototypical, prototypical captain because yeah. yeah he's he's he the, first the first one, but he's not like the quintessential captain. If so only we had some kind of law to determine how we interact with oh, these God. primitive species. <laughs> 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 See that, that means... gets an emotional reaction out of me. It's revulsion, but it's you know, it's an emotional reaction. It means we're going to encounter the Borg in two hundred twenty nine years, three hundred forty seven days, and twelve seconds. <laughs> That's unbelievable, to Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Enterprise D? <laughs> <laughs> Are they making it in Galaxy Class now? It's a big boy. Um, I'm trying to think of like other big emotional... Like, hmm. I'm sure there must be some Seven episodes that do it. Seven has I mean, really the good one where the Doctor sort of, he's madly in love with Seven, isn't he? When that, that kind of uh, you're over me. Yeah, that's a, oh yeah, yeah. That's quite tragic for him. I wouldn't say a tearjerker, but... I mean, Data's sacrifice in Nemesis is just an ape of Spock's, but it's it's still yeah. it's okay, but it's very hollow. It's very it isn't earned. 
You don't feel the most emotional part of it isn't uh, takes place actually before the sacrifice, and it's that moment where um, Geordi and Data go down uh, below decks and they mm-hmm. find the exact right place for him to launch. Um, and he turns back to Geordi, and you can tell Geordi already knows. Mm-hmm. Geordi already knows that Data is dead, and he has like this resigned look on his face, but he knows he can't stop Data, oh, uh, and he just kind of goes, "Well, okay." But the, then the other thing is the 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 toast at the end, the the to absent yeah. friend from the from the TNG yeah. cast. I mean that I okay, and I will say it's like because I saw I saw Nemesis in in the theater, and that it's like I had a whiteboard. It was when I like my first or second semester in college, and it's like I wrote to absent friends on my whiteboard yeah. after I saw the movie because that absolutely devastated me mm. at that mm. time. You know, I think maybe there's kind of a, a latent uh, nostalgic bit of uh, that still. Okay, resonating. that's fair. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. And I also think that Freaks does a really good job of selling the toast there, where he talks about um, meeting Data. Oh, yeah. And him singing. Whistle. Yeah. Yeah, um, Pop Goes the Weasel. <laughs> so there's also, um, which is kind of the best acting Marina Sirtis has done, and it's a shame it came so late, but her explaining Thaddeus' death in the Penthe. Yeah, quite, that was really rough. Sort of her, her sort of reserved judgment towards Soji and like kind of explaining that whole thing was actually really well done. That's why the Penthe is like one of my favourite episodes in kind of all the Trek, even though Picard season one was a bit of a flat egg. That's such a good one because that's actually giving Marina Sirtis something to, good to do for once. No, no, Penthe has such ridiculously strong emotional oh, depth. So good. Like, it really does feel like like, it makes you look back at TNG and be like, this is what those characters were really kind yeah. of... That's the depth and complexity of what they were actually feeling. It's like getting... A, it, the whole episode is like getting a big hug from someone you haven't seen in about 20 yeah. years. It literally is. Yeah. It's, the only, it's the only good thing that we get out of the entire Picard series is that Nepenthe exists as an episode. It will yeah. have been worth it. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually fair. If you guys saw the... Because I think we even talked about it on on a timeline stocks in the past. The probably would have been last year's Star Trek Day thing, where they do all the panels mm. and they get together. And every time you see them together, you're like, "Damn, they're old." And then you go, "Damn, I'm old." <laughs> <laughs> but it's it, whenever you you always want the get together. But I don't know. It's it's like if Frasier or Cheers or some other shows where you're like, all right, that was the, that was the right ending. We don't need to go back to like, it's fine. It's fine if they ended on that, but part of you always wants, you always want that one more, but there's a risk. They mess it up. So you're right, big, they, they did it. They gave us the one more and they did it and they didn't mess it up. And that's very rare in television. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would definitely agree with that. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think if there are any in Discovery that I really connected with. Um, I've talked about like how much I really enjoy um, Adira Tal's like mm. um, big um, the symbiont episode. I really enjoyed that. They haven't uh, really done the big I... emotional payoff for the audience yet. They have done the characters, but they haven't for... There's nothing... They've... They haven't done a tragedy really... Yeah. Okay, they're... I'm going to have to disagree with you on that because there's the... Um... The moment with Pike when he picks up the time crystal, like oh, okay, that. Yeah. If we want to talk about visceral emotional yeah, reactions, okay. that one, I was like, I kind of can't believe I'm lucky enough to watch this because, like, <laughs> like because it it's like as a Trek fan, it's always been like, you know, Christopher Pike, you know, the first Captain of the Enterprise, the original, the actual. Well, that's second, the actual prototypical, you know, from technically. Right, so hold on, give give, give us a a quick. And I say quick sum up of that for people who who don't recall that. Okay, so I believe it's um the episode's called Through the Valley of Shadows. And the setup is that they need a time crystal so that they can power the Red Angel suit. Um and the only place you can get them uh is the monastery on Boris. The Klingon monastery. And they find um Tanavik the timekeeper, you may know it's a timelines card. He's running shuttle smooth right now. Um and the <laughs> essential idea is that they protect the time crystals and basically make sure that they can't be abused um, for time travel because they have a more enlightened, more spiritual um, understanding of time. Um, and that's sort of like underpinned by the fact that you know, we saw Tanavik like four episodes ago and he was a baby. Now he's a fully grown man and he's very clearly learned quite a bit in that space of time. 
Um, and he brings Pike into the chamber with all the time crystals, and he's like, you know, you can take one, but you have to face what is in that time crystal, and if you touch it and you take it and you decide that you you will pay the cost, that is your future. It was basically like and, me opening opening fence and Picard packs last. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> um, so he sort of he reaches down, he looks around, he's like, okay, which is the one that I need to take, and then he he reaches out, touches it, and then he immediately gets thrown into. I believe it's like you know, nearly ten years later, hmm. when he's a fleet admiral aboard that training vessel, and the accident happens. And the instant he gets thrown into it, you're like, oh, that's what that, this is what that looked like. And it's mm. really rough. Like, yeah. it's like you watch, and it's like, that's that, that's that moment where um, you think of um, Carl Urban McCoy talking about the dangers of space and about how easy it is to die. And you're like, that doesn't happen in Star Trek. Sometimes it does. And it's really fucking rough when it happens. Yeah. I, I'm really um, looking so- forward to them expanding that in Stranger Worlds because they said that, you know, he's going to be haunted by that a bit. Well, yeah. in this, the the shorter TLDR is if he takes this time crystal to save the universe, the fear that he has to face is that he will be crippled in the future. And so he makes the conscious decision, I will make the sacrifice in order to help others. That's too which, long for flavor yeah. text, mate. You, that won't fit on the page. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, does Boris Pike even have um, my flavor text? Time I'm crystal curious. evoke feelings. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Um... But yeah, it's because it's that moment where, like, you know, he touches his face because he's got the radiation, and then in the in the background you hear that iron lung noise, and you see the TOS wheelchair, and it's like I remember watching that, and I knew exactly what was going to happen, mm. but I still had that moment of dread, like you're watching it, like you're in when you're in a nightmare. I was like, this is really visceral. It mm. really puts you in Pike's mind space, and it's like. And then his reaction to that and what he calls upon for strength just is really inspiring. So Okay, but aside that, from I think that discovery, discovery is big really emotional. Had any emotional parents. <laughs> yeah, apart from that apart shit. From that. You just felt that. <laughs> I, I you joke, but it's it's true. There's like that and maybe one other point, and the rest of it hasn't grabbed me personally. No, so. no, I, I will I will agree that there's no there's no being sort of major pull tragedy. Where they're gonna kind of save that for a lot of character build up and do something close to the end of maybe the whole series would probably be where I'd expect that as opposed to sort of individual story kind of things. Hmm. I could probably pull through another one I think another good few moments of like discovery where I'm like, I really, really enjoy this for this that yeah. reason, but <coughs> Yeah, Arium's death is pretty rough. That, okay that one's pretty that it was rough. Rushed. I think they needed to. It was pretty much signposted, yeah. but I still think it's effective. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty well, good. Well, that's my. And now I'm stopping in the middle of requisition shuttle, so you know I'm serious about this. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's my whole thing with Discovery is they go from. Like, there's no payoff to anything, and it. That's sort of the way I've described it is the whole series almost feels like the last 15 minutes of a movie. Where they keep giving you payoff, they keep giving you the, the the big swell of music, but I'm not I'm not really attached to that's anything kind of that's modern, happening before. That's more like a contemporary kind of it lost kind of start that kind of thing with the whole mystery box, and they kind of they realized that daytime television didn't have to be these one things they could keep people strung along to keep them watching, and it's kind of a more evocative of uh, of a sort of like modern. Uh, TV storytelling devices and some TV shows do it well others don't do it as well and sort of you know it just does depend on the context and I can just understand how that doesn't resonate with some people and I do, do agree to certain parts there's not enough for some some of the episodes there's not the payoff isn't earned like you need to have something you can't just say this person died but it's so tragic and you kind of go well yeah but why <laughs> It's not like other series didn't do it either. Mm. TOS did it every single week. Like you always knew mm. who was going to die in the episode, and were you meant to feel anything? Or like if they if their goal was only to showcase how strong the bad guy is, that's fine. But if you actually wanted anyone to feel anything watching your mm. show, like also, they never you even approached that. that. Shouldn't feel deep wells of emotion for Larry Marvick. <sighs> I mean, to be fair, he did love Miranda Jones like no other man has loved a woman yeah. before. So. Yeah, really. Well, yes. Yeah, like, how, how many how many times can they kill Krillin and they still expect us to care? <laughs> <laughs> Keep Krillin, Krillin. Um. 
I mean, I, I could keep on going with discovery moments, but I think we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll put, a, uh, put a pipe in there. Um, so, uh, time travel back 42 minutes or so, uh, when Big brought up the idea of doing non-timeline stuff in the future. <laughs> um, one of the things, and that would be more of a seasonal thing, is talking about the shows, upcoming shows, mm. Discovery, mm, yes. Prodigy, Strange New Worlds, there's going to be a lot of content there. And then another idea is... Um, that you brought up in the past, Idol, is this sort of history of Trek thing, yes. which would be a more top-down look that would cover all sorts of things and maybe a little more detached than us mm. crying over Admiral Haftel. Yeah, I've kind of written up, and Stars, you've seen a bit of it, sort of like a... I wanted to look into the kind of the hypothetical what started the sort of... Diver- not that there is a real divergence, but the diversion between, like, real life and, like, where the Trek sort of universe sort of went off. Because, obviously, 1996 wasn't overrun with eugenics war soldiers. There has to be sort of, like, a diversion timeline. Sort of, I went through of, like... Going I mean, it wasn't in Voyager either, yeah, so... Exactly. So there has to be a little accommodation. So I've sort of started writing up something on that that I would really, when I get time, really like to sort of sit down with you guys and sort of talk through and, yeah, yeah see, see where I can go with that. That's something I want to do. But I'd absolutely love to do, like... Like a kind of a spoiler cast where say uh, when discovery season falls over and we can go back and go right let's talk about this series and well, we could do episode by episode but i know stars you haven't started watching it yet and i know the other guys no i'm, yeah, I'm yeah. kind of waiting for a good chunk of it to be ready before yeah. I, I start watching definitely could do it by lower deck season two i could talk about that for days mm-hmm. just how good i don't have a big enough helmet for that <laughs> <laughs> run alarm <laughs> <coughs> have you watched the stars no, I haven't. Oh, uh, Brody on. hasn't been in the mood. Brody hasn't been in the mood. Damn That's it. the problem. Just watch it. Just just do do the typical other half thing. And watch it. And go. If I watched it without him, I'm not doing that. I'm not risking my balls. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like the instant they described, um, oh, who who was it they described? So they described. Uh, I think it was Boimler described a character as like Jim Cook with trip Tucker sp- uh, sprinkles. So it was like Brady yeah. was immense. He was yeah. just like, okay, I'm not. So it's like if I watch it with that, I'm just gonna be majorly annoyed. I just, I just want to talk to you about the the one, the other lower deckers episode. I really do like this. It's, it's a really mm. good one. It's definitely up your alleyway. Okay. Prodigy feel... as well. I've watched. I watched the sort of the, the only five episodes of Prodigy so far as well, and surprisingly. Bear in mind, it's a kids' show. I'm quite impressed. They don't hold back on, mm. like, the mature theme or the whole any of the techno babble either. Like, they it, it's they set up quite well as a Star Trek episode, and kind of, and it's great to hit, listen to Kate Mulgrew again. Yeah, like she's an incredible voice talent. Yeah, there's definitely nods there. It's yeah, Prodigy's kind of great. I was sat down and watched it with my son, and I was just like, I'm going to kind of watch this without you, and then watch it later again, so I can watch it twice. I'm quite happy with this. Definitely evokes sort of Clone Wars feelings when that first started. Like if, if yeah, you, if well, you, if me, you me like and Brody are currently working on that. So yeah, if you, if you like the Clone Wars, you'll you'll like Prodigy. Like it's it's. So talk to me, guys, about how you watch series because there are some that work better when you binge them because you'll be like, mm. oh, that that callback to four episodes ago mm. was only two hours on my watch, and so I would have remembered that. But then there are others Whoa. that are like um, back in the day, I would watch. 24 and my dad and, and brother liked it too so we would watch it one week at a time mm. call each oh, other God, during commercial so breaks that sort of thing so it, some series really work one way some work the, the dark other way. ages how do you guys watch your shows and which ones do you feel specifically work one way or the other well i'll say that um with these um marvel series that have come along i have and you, it, i've managed to keep up with them and watch them as they they are released and i definitely a show like say wandavision or to a lesser degree like maybe loki they really work where you have you watch it when it comes out and then you kind of just ruminate on it and mull it over for that week and then you come to the next one uh for the for the trek series especially the newer trek series i th- i think they work better as a binge uh, mm-hmm. because it it keeps it more self-contained because it just the pace seems to move so quickly that I think having all that information fresh in your mind makes it more advantageous in my Actually, mind. I, I kind of like um, Lower Ducks f- the opposite way for that reason. It's very frenetic. And if you get two or three episodes in, you're like, all right, guys, slow down. You're mm-hmm. kind of giving me a headache. Like I appreciate all the in-jokes and stuff, but it's like it's too much 
There's explosions every three seconds and people are yelling. And it's like, all right, I'm getting old. Hold on. Let me catch <laughs> yeah. my breath. And I think Lower Decks specifically, is it, that goes the other way. I'm talking more about the, the live action mm. Trek, new Trek add up to this point. Because, yeah, Lower Decks, I mean, and Lower Decks is really not meant to be, I mean, yes, I guess it's serialized because the their, the characters do have their overarching plots and stuff. But th- that's really, every episode seems pretty self-contained to yeah, me. Yeah, you can to pick up any it, Lower Decks and just go go straight in. Like, there's no, no barrier for entry there, really. Yeah. So yeah, that that one I, I would say yeah, just because of the the family guyification uh, factor of it, where it's just bam, 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 bam. you do. It's like you almost need a cigarette, and I don't smoke. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> yeah, come on. No, you uh, go. No, I th- I think I'm because I'm a consummate reader of the internet. So like I've done it several times where I've just been clicking idly when I've had a bit of a slow moment of working. Oh shit, I haven't watched this episode yet. I can't read that thread. So I have to kind of watch everything as soon as it comes out because I I need to read about it what other people are saying and then come disappointed and disagree with everyone about what they're saying. I thought that was Jonas walking in your room big just then. <laughs> Jonas messaging in the chat saying, "Can I come in and say hi?" And then just yeah. but yeah, I I, I have to. I have to watch everything as it comes out because otherwise right, I'm just so going to get spoiled. Let's call the stream, gentlemen. We had a good time tonight. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. You can't hey, give Jim, us the hook. You, you can't hey, give Jim. us the hook if you tried. We'll just keep vamping. Here he comes. Hey. Hey. What's up, there there he is. <laughs> Welcome in. Hey, What's up, you handsome fellows? <laughs> Oh, All four of you, you fellow kids. <laughs> yes, all, all four of you. You all look beautiful today. What do you want? <laughs> what, what am I on? Uh, I took a two and a half hour nap. So uh, that, was, that was fantastic. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. It's a Funko. It's the dude Funko. It. It's the dude. It's Jeff Bridges himself. That's just like your opinion, man. Um... In terms of opinions, so on binging, uh, I re- I tend to just like I- I'm kind of over having to watch series as they come out. Like I did that with Discovery season two, and to a degree, I enjoyed it because I got to speculate and I got to be like, "Ooh, what what could this thing from the next time trigger mean?" And I was like, "Yeah, that was enjoyable to a degree." Um, but then I experienced the absolute polar opposite when I decided to watch The Mandalorian. Um, so I watched Mandalorian about, I think, like a year or and a half after it came out. Like, season one oh, and wow. two were both out. Um, the whole stuff with Gina Carano had already come out by that point. Oh, shit. That's not um, and, well, no. This is why it was good. Because that means I could look at her character and I was like, I don't have to get attached to you because yeah, I know what your true. actor's done. Mm. Um, and it meant I just got to watch all the episodes as, as often as I wanted to watch it. I didn't have to wait. I didn't Fake have to feel like speculating. Um, and to a degree, it's like that was like the absolute polar opposite of oh, I wonder what happens. I was like, I like the fact that I know which you know, like, I like knowing because if I had watched it as it came out and seen in each individual episode, and then that whole thing would have dropped, I would have been like, that's a shame. As it was, yeah. I'm like, I don't have to care. Da, 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 I have all the context. Did you hear the recent thing about that whole, because they're supposed to do like a Rangers and the New Republic show, which she was yeah. supposed to be one of the stars for and, and someone else. And they recently came out and went, oh, oh yeah, we, we weren't planning that. and really, We really weren't far on in that at all. I'm like, yeah, whatever. You're trying to detach yourself so much from being associated as much as you can, aren't you? Because she's a nubble. <laughs> having, yeah. friends, having friends to talk to discuss a show with makes the week at a time thing that much more enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, it really does depend on your friend group and what everyone's into, to a degree. Yeah, I'll just go and post screenshots of like, look at this Star Trek ship! Look, they've the, look at this! I need more ship porn! <laughs> Give me all those 32nd century ships, like, please! I, I suppose, to a degree, maybe that's also why I'm way more into binging it, because that's partly how Brody watches it, and we watch pretty much everything together, so, mm. like... It, I I instantly get to talk with him while it's going on, after the episode yeah. has gone on, and then before we watch the next one, I can have a conversation with him. So, to a degree, I have those conversations immediately with him, rather than you know waiting to have it over a water cooler or over a beer or whatever. So, unfortunately, I don't. That's have, pretty part of the reason. I don't have many people I can talk to about Star Trek. I'm watching well, in my real life, maybe, apart from you maybe, guys. Maybe this, maybe this is going to be our water cooler. Yeah, I don't there know. you go. Uh, no matter. I should get some water. I'm kind of thirsty. 
I just had to put a, well, put a bunch of stuff in the attic. Sure. Sure. Glad <laughs> yeah, right? I, should I go get a golden eyes? A what? Oh, that's a... Yeah, I don't know I'm what totally getting one. Ahead. Please it's, be told. It's still early for you, so knock yourself out. Yeah. He said, should I get a golden eyes? And I, I made it, I was like, what, like the N64 game? Like what? Gold finger. <laughs> I am invincible. <laughs> Anyone got an N64? Come on, let's go. <laughs> All right. <sighs> if we can get a game for the N64, I'd be down for that. There's a game for the N64 called, like, Army Men or something. I think, yeah, yeah, that's not called the movie, right? Um, I, f I forget what it's called. Anyway, most of the time you're, like, fl you're flying a different kind of helicopter or airplane, and you can, like, pick up pick up the army guys and power-ups and stuff. And I, all I remember is I play the crap out of it with my buddy after school. And I don't think I, I'll probably never be able to find a working copy of it again. But that was one of the N6, that one and Kirby as uh, uh, N64 games. Neither, neither, neither of my... Uh, of all the games that you might require, sir. I can't fathom how you've come across those. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you reminded me to check uh, GOG.com for Armada. Oh, still not ready. Still not oh my god. No. We're nearly finished the campaign now. We're getting there. We've got a few more missions. Yeah. You gotta blow up more of your own ships, dude. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah. We're big, trying. The, tri the trying. triples are multiplying big. Yeah, yeah they're, these fuckers are born pregnant. <laughs> They're in the machinery, all right. Wait, wait, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> Captain Tribble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my baby. Those are adorable children. All right, boys. Before I swing around to more Corona talk, what is new in your neck of the woods? Uh, well, speaking of the offspring, I, uh, my daughter really spent bad. her first night really in bad. a toddler, yeah, toddler bed last night. I thought you were talking about the next generation the episode. We're all right. on different wavelengths now. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, human, my human offspring. Yeah, she she spent the first night in toddler bed last night, and she didn't try to leave the room or run around and climb on things, and she just stayed in bed and slept. So that's a win. The first time I put my eldest in a, in a in a bed, first time out of the bars and everything, like he he didn't roll or anything, but we put him in there and he's fine. I went to bed, like great, great, go to bed. And then like ten minutes later, I just hear this crying. I go up there and he's in the middle of this room, looking really confused about why he's out of bed. He's just lying on the floor, just going, "What's going on? I'm free." <laughs> like just go go back to bed, mate. Go on up, you go. Awesome. Mm. You're still muted, big. Oh, I know. He okay. knows. He knows. <laughs> He's given commands. Just blink three times yeah. if you're in distress. He's mouthing, help me. <laughs> well, I got like seven business days left of work this year, so I'm happy about that. Last two oh, weeks nice. of the year, I'm off. Nice. Unfortunately, last week to be off, my, my daughter's also, her daycare is closed, so that means I'm basically not off. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah you're, I'm, you're you, you, you You become kindergarten cop, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Put the cookie down! Not <laughs> the You ever see that Vin Diesel version of that that was just called the Pacifier? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. I mean, sure I'm not saying yeah, I've seen it, but yeah, I'm aware of it. <laughs> I think every Swole guy has been contracted to do one of those movies at one point or another. Oh, no. What was, what was Hulk Hogan's one? He had one. Yeah, I was just gonna bring him up. Oh, Mr. Nanny. Mr. Nanny. I think. Mr. Nanny. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And The Rock did the Tooth Fairy movie too. Oh, he did, so, didn't he? yeah. Christ. Wasn't Hogan Johnson also an time. alien or something? Probably. Yeah, what? probably. I remember him being like in the previews of like a VHS tape that I I used to watch like over and over again. I can't remember what it's called, but he was like some sort of alien. Hulk Hogan. You mean yeah. like Suburban Commando? Oh yeah. Ma oh, is that yeah. the one with Christopher Lloyd? Like like Commander Cruise himself? I was frozen today! Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Volcanic says Kindergarten Cobb had Admiral Cornwell in it. Wow. Admiral Cornwell. Wait, what, really? Yeah. Admiral Cornwell, Jane Brooke, was in a series, a very short run series called John Doe. 
sometime in like the early 2000s. And it's the guy, I forget his actor's name, it's the guy from Prison Break. He, he doesn't have his memory, so he doesn't know who he is, but he has all the combined knowledge of anyone in the world. So he can tell you like how many people live in this country or he can tell you how many miles to the next star, whatever. So uh, he's like the super I'm genius. Doing this kidney stone, got it. Yeah, and yeah. he's trying to figure out who he is. And I might have really Miller. gotten to that show. It was a good show. Uh, but they Chris only himself, like yeah. One season. Uh, good reference. Yeah, that, uh, that reminds me of the uh, the show, The Pretender, uh, that which was good the one. other the other time before uh, you know Subway or the Gallery of Jewelry. The the other person sharing my first name uh, that was uh, of note. Big. Yes, <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Big, Tom Hanks. It was, it, was, it, was, yeah, it was Tom Hanks, then the the Paul Gilbert band, and then uh, then me. So, uh, so I feel like I've skipped three conversations. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? No. Uh, I I have to ask, um, and because I think this, I feel like this some was a somewhat of a niche show, but I enjoyed it. Have any of you watched the uh, the Netflix uh, Lost in Space? No, not yet. No, I have it. It's very good though. Yeah. It's only three seasons. It just it just wrapped up, but I enjoyed it. It doesn't really have any like big name actors or actresses, as far as I'm concerned. But I really enjoyed it. It's a good reimagining of that concept. So did you ever see the, it's on Netflix um, in the US. I don't know where it is where it is in Netflix the UK here as well. I think. But did you ever see? Yeah, the, Netflix. Yeah. Um, the film with uh, Joey and Heather Graham. Um, <laughs> Oh, oh dude. I, I can't accept any Lost in Spaces without Matt LeBlanc. In, so you know, <laughs> that's all oh. LeBlanc. Yeah, maybe he had, maybe he had a cameo. I don't know. I could do a half hour on that movie because I grew. That was one of the few VHSs oh. I had growing up. So I watched the thing a billion times, and so uh, after I got married, I thought, you know, that's a movie my wife and I haven't seen together. We'll go back and watch that. I remember that being a good movie. <laughs> and, she, and she was okay with Star Trek and stuff too, so we go back and we watch a movie together. And the first forty minutes are kind of okay. Yeah, that thing nosedives so freaking hard. By the end of that, I'm like, please, can I turn off the television? It was. Are you so telling bad. me you didn't enjoy Spider Lord Doctor Smith? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's the. What about William Hurt sounding like he's anesthetized? <laughs> like I don't know. <laughs> And the innocence of youth made me think right. that was a classic or something. I'll have to rewatch oh. this guy. The uh, the Mister Smith in the Netflix one is gender bent. Oh, you know, Doctor Smith. Yeah. And she is devious. Fun. Like it's mm. it's pretty oh, bad. She like she is be. so That's... she's so hateable. It's That's crazy. Dumb. It's like how are you getting away with all this stuff? How has no one caught on to you yet? <laughs> Uh, to be fair, that's like the whole. Wasn't that the entire reason Lost in Space got any traction at all in the original? Was because the guy playing Dr. Smith in the original 60s show was just so over the top that everyone loved him. It's kind of the. Uh, then they just turned into the wacky Dr. Smith show, it's, basically. It's the template I for Dr. Chaotica, isn't it? Essentially. That yeah. Kind yeah. Of <laughs> well, I'll make the most of this also. I watched yeah. a couple episodes of the 60s version, but the only scene I remember is they they land on a planet. And there's a sentient slot machine that chases them around the planet. And it has a laser built into the top that fires at them. And I'm like, this I don't. This is either great or awful, but I remember that episode. So <laughs> That makes Turnabout and Intruder sound like sophisticated. Lost in space, colon, the Royale. Yeah. On the sentient pachinko machine. <laughs> 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 Anyway, the the fact that Gary Oldman was in the movie, I think, is what made most people it watch was it. Was Gary Oldman? Yeah. Wow. Well. You mean no one was watching for Heather Graham? Well, actually, no. I take it back. That's fifty. It's fifty fifty. Yeah. After, but after I watched movies. for Gary Oldman. Felicity <laughs> Shagwell herself. Yeah. And uh, Doctor Molly Clock. Gary Shagwell. Doctor yeah. Molly Clock. Thank you, stars. I knew I liked you. Yeah. <laughs> I think my I think my favorite Molly Clock moment is um. When she's talking with Elliot and she's like, um, you know, I can pinpoint exactly what it is about you that you hate about the most about yourself. And she's like, that's ridiculous. There's no way you can eyebrows. 
<laughs> and she just turns and walk away, and then um, JD's like, "What was she talking?" And then just turns back, and she's like, uh, mascara dripping all the way down her face, just honking tears. And it's like S- Scrubs is a genius Stop. show. Like that is the writing is so good. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Like <sighs> I could. That's that's the show when I was in university that would just I would have on repeat in the background all the time. Like, yeah, just Scrubs. Yeah, yeah. Should rewatch it. It's a. It's a tier six show for me. Sorry, oh. guys. Really? Oh, it's got Dr. Paul Stubbs in it. No, I mean <laughs> it, it has its, it has its moments, but I would not sit down and marathon it. My wife is done, so I've mm. I've heard I mm. watch pretty much every episode osmosisly. That's fine. We, you, you're not just you just can't appreciate Dr. Crocs. That's fine. You know, it's like yeah, it's, it, it would have been tier eight without Heather Graham. So what can I say? Uh, that's fair. fair enough. <laughs> I, what what I love is all these shows that are like super popular. That people are now streaming now. They all now have rewatch podcasts. So I'm just yeah. I'm listening yeah. to all of those and rewatching them, in, including Timeline Socks, of course. <laughs> which we start our own utter, which podcast. <laughs> yeah, we rewatch ourselves. Man, these episodes are shit. <laughs> what are you talking about? The writing on this was garbage. <laughs> yeah, that's always true. Yeah, I was oh, going through a rough patch this time in my life. <laughs> Drinking heavily. Oh, wait, that's every time. Um, the best part about Timeline Socks, the podcast, is there are no ads. Okay. I don't have to skip them. <laughs> Yet. Apart from the beers, the beer ads are really aggressive. <laughs> I, I enjoy that. I would do that's like fair. a I would do like a Lost in Space rewatch with you guys and just heckle the shit out of it. <laughs> we should. Yeah, that, that's prime yeah. riffing material. That like really. Fun. Did I ever tell you guys when I was back in when I was back in Utah, oh, I came up with an idea and I really wanted to do it, but I could never find willing participants. But was, I think I did tell you about it, and it's called the, I called it the Great Galactic Roulette, and basically would I'd, I'd basically have a sheet yeah. full of different shows and I'd have a dice roll and would roll the dice to see which which series we'd watch next and we sort of go through it different oh, ways. Oh boy. Yeah. And obviously some things you'd watch sequential. Or some real winners and losers in that, I can yeah, imagine. You could definitely roll the dice and get some trash or get something quite good, but I, th- I kind of thought that would be quite a cool idea, but I could never find that. That's an idea. <laughs> Which I've just you know, told I mean, to everyone. You could, even, you could go even more granular with that and not have it be what series are we watching next. Just like, have it be a gigantic slot machine and it could be any yeah. episode of any series and you just have to watch it <laughs> Old right there. Yeah, like you could you could do one roll for the series, and then you have another random for the number of episodes in that series. Yeah. Just do an RNG I on. I like this a lot. Yeah. <laughs> there's a good chance you end up with Code of Honor. I mean, there's a non-zero chance you end up with Code of Honor. Like, if you're watching zero something chance. terrible together, that's great. It's when you get the kind of yeah. the middle of the road episodes of like Enterprise from series two or something. You just kind of. Yeah. Go, <laughs> moment where like you have like your your your, your big list of things and it's like you've got like Battlestar Galactica on there twice and it's like you roll the dice and it says oh Battlestar Galactica 1978 and everyone's like Aah! no even worse 1980 or something like that oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no. uh, that's the one we did we did rewatch the episode Voyager episode Threshold together, and it was probably better than watching it alone. It was... I would say, yeah, I <laughs> wouldn't have watched how... it alone by choice. <laughs> Just realizing how how much Janeway is trying to chat up Paris the entire episode. Yeah, that was really it was playing up there. Mm. Yeah, we should do that. Subtlety, you know, it's just like I feel like uh, watching, especially pepperoni. '90s Star Trek, it really does feel like that. God, I'd love a Thank pepperoni you. pizza with Caprian olives right now. I'm starving. Thank you. Um... <laughs> It reminds me of that Garth Marenghi's um, Dark Place quote. It's like, I, um, I know writers who use subtext and subtlety and they're all cowards. It's like Star Trek, especially in the 90s, is very much just that. There's no subtlety at all. I love Dark Place. It's such a good, it's such a bizarre but good show. It's like, mm. <laughs> I love the fact it's like, it's in the water, the water, the water. It's... <laughs> This is going to be a confusing question, but stars. Are you wearing a stars T-shirt? S T A R S. No, I'm actually wearing an Xavier Institute. Oh, um, okay. I just, got, outfit, I just got so. like the circle logo, and I wasn't, I wasn't sure. No, I'm I sure you have one. If you don't Evil. have one, I, I should get some more Resident Evil shirts. Honestly, you I have, have a, you had a, a RE4 Merchant one, I think, right? So yeah, I, and I've got I an saw. RE2 one where it's like Neon trying to type on a typewriter, and he's surrounded by every enemy in the game, <laughs> pointing awesome. at his insecurities. Damn liquors. Hey, man. I'm on the I am wearing a t shirt from Chewy's, a Mexican food restaurant chain. <laughs> in the uh, 
I I enjoy no, Pee-wee's. My wife thinks that Pee-wee's on tacos. Yeah. I'm wearing a Shrew Farms t-shirt. Fair. Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd. There you go. There you go. Uh, like, that's that's one of my favorite restaurants. <laughs> yeah. I was into Pink Floyd long before I had children. Oh, no. that's No, that only enforces the point, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what point you thought you were trying to make there. No, Jesus, either. bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's like a parrot or something on a... Is that a tardigrade? <gasps> it is indeed, actually. Oh, amazing. Wow. Cute. It is Shady River. Don't make appearance. Yeah, uh, it's actually it's a it was a gift from my my former fleet when my uh, youngest Aww. daughter was born. Yeah. They, That's adorable. They, a plush tardigrade. Yeah, it's a, That's it's a cute. microscopic cute. water bear. <laughs> if it was a real life thing and the size of a man, it would eat your face off. <laughs> I mean, Ripper, Ripper did do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Thank you for the scrimmation, my small big. <laughs> small big small big medium, medium big and then big big and there's big looks like huge I swear there. he's like a little doppelganger of big and then there's just beyond huge <laughs> beyond huge is that his <laughs> oh, is that thing that's good there you go there's the real talent <laughs> uh, alright gentlemen I, I'm afraid I have to bow out cause yeah I think it's, it's time to probably call this one Oh, yeah. Thanks, yeah, for, thanks for letting me on for a second. So we gotta stop. Yeah, we oh, literally true. wouldn't. This is good. We should do this again. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, it's a good so fun. It, was, it was half about talking Mexican food and then half about actual truck, <laughs> so that was pretty good. Oh, that's the Mexican food <laughs> part. And oh, Portuguese you... food. Yeah. Oh, and, and... yeah. You, you, you missed the uh, uh, idol having building material as a lasagna conversation. I think. Listen, you've got to get builders grade. Materials, otherwise it's just not as delicious. So we'll timestamp this by food, by food okay. pyramid structure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just don't eat your chicken wings with ranch, or I will kick and ban you from. No. Just life. I've never had. I, I don't. I've never had ranch. I don't think. Can we get? It's it? not really a massive thing over yeah, here in the UK. You, I'm sure you can get ranch dressing in the UK. Try. It's probably in the American food section. Yeah. So, so Jonas and I, Jonas and I are both from Buffalo. And they are like the originators of the chicken wings. So I, if you have not had chicken wings yet. Oh, the buffalo wing? Well, they're like the same thing, basically. It's just maybe yeah. the flavoring is a little different. Okay. But they had the pizza and wings in Buffalo. Are, mm. I still miss them to this Love day. Wings. So I could just give me yeah. lots of wings. I could just destroy them all. Yeah. Oh, and I just uh, found out something else interesting from our Buffalo roots is uh, Susie Plaxon was actually born in Buffalo, which neither of us knew that I discovered today. Now, no so, name neighbors have to make a pilgrimage there. You should. <laughs> yeah. It is the time to go see and the Susie. I knew that. I, I knew I liked her. Yeah. <laughs> she got that Buffalo energy. All right, I got to get out of here. I, yeah. I need like a shower and just. This. Bye, guys. Yeah, yeah I need first. a shower too, man. Yep. Thanks for joining us. Have a good one, guys. And, uh, Thanks for popping in, guys, for a complete nonsense. Ah! <laughs> Lots of nonsense. We love it. We'll do it again. When next time Auto's got another quarantine and lonely, we'll get together yeah. and talk about yeah. it. <laughs> That's a good idea. If Poor I don't drag you guys kicking and screaming, it just doesn't happen. So I'm tut tut, I'm tut tut. Tut tut tutting behind everyone. I'm like, come on, guys. Let's do it tonight, tonight, tomorrow night. Yeah. Don't forget to flip your shuttles. Oh, shit. <laughs> don't remember. Don't forget. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Later, everybody. Bye, guys. Toodaloo.